six, six, seven, eight, ten. Oh, we are already online. Uh, on the air, today is May 25. We have Brian, Gabriel, and Katie with us. And we have two viewers. Hello, viewers. Um, we are a community around the website humancolony.org. And you can also please join us on Facebook. Uh, search for Hucola, H U C O L O, which is abbreviation of Human Colony, and search for our, for our um, site on Google Plus, uh, where we do the hangouts. So follow us on Google Plus again. Search for Hucola, and follow us. We'll follow you, add us, add you in our circles, and then we'll invite you for broadcast. So you can really participate. Uh, we invite donations. Uh, Jim, uh, we have channelers. Jim, Nick. Zechariah, who are, and two others, but Jim, you can Zechariah invite private sessions, and I invite uh, paid uh, spiritual consultations, and this can be a default payment. So I will consult you on your path, healing, spiritual matters, extraterrestrial matters. I know much about that, and I have some channeling connections, some inside, and I can also. Uh, Communicate to aliens through others. Welcome, Dan. Um, now, hey, Dan. Now we have four people participating, and my I think we do a bit of introductions again. And I wanted to Brian to open up to public. Brian, remember that Jesus is channeling. He said, "Just tell your story," and that's the you know that's your just begin it. Don't be profound. Be Play it easy, and just share a little bit with us, and then we'll see how it goes. Okay, uh, my story was uh, just so I'll just share a little bit in general. Um, when I was very young, I had I guess I'm gonna say a near death experience. Um, I almost drowned. It. I basically did. Um, I was on my last breath. I fell into a pool, uh, kind of like a lake, and I saw a flash of bluish greenish tint light. Um, I rem I was about three, I'd say maybe three and a half, and I just I told myself just to let go, and I didn't care if I was going to live or die at that. I was struggling at the beginning, but I could I didn't really know how to swim, and I let go, and I saw a flash of light, um, a couple sec more seconds, it, it seemed like eternity. It just went by so fast, but it, it was taking forever. And all of a sudden, uh, my uncle jumped in, apparently, and he grabbed me and pulled me out. And I was, I, I don't think I could, I was breathing, or if I was breathing really heavy, it was just, I was, I think it took a couple seconds, and then I started coughing, but I felt like my mind just went blank. Like I was just, I don't remember, it was like it was so, it was just, all I remember was the flash of light. And, um... He, he saved my life, my uncle. Um, if it was if he wasn't on the balcony overlooking, I would probably would have died definitely because there was no one else around. I just tumbled down. I fell into um, I fell into the lake and just tumbled down the hill. And that's what was know. those? Uh, I mean, just having near death experience. It sounded very physical, very three D. Is there a uh, spiritual component? The spiritual was maybe the flashing of light, mm -hmm. just touching the other side for a brief second or so. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like I was at so much peace. That was what's weird because as soon as I felt like I just let go, I was just like struggling, trying to stay afloat, you know, natural instincts, and then I just let go. And I think maybe a couple seconds to a minute went by. I don't know, and it just. And I just saw a flash of light. I didn't see any beans or anything, but it just, it, it, I remember like I felt so at peace, so calm after that. And then when they pulled me, my uncle pulled me out, and then I don't know if he was doing CPR or something, but he just seemed like he pushed on my stomach or something, but I just started like coughing a lot, like water a little bit coming out, and it just. Have you really, visited the other side, or the spiritual side? Uh, no, I wasn't. I wasn't gone long enough to have that connection. But 
So now we had a kind of poltergeist. The blue thing around you danced a lot behind you. And it was a person, okay, it was a kid. I thought it was a ghost, but it was a kid uh, behind you playing in your blue background. Hey, kid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's my uh, my son. That's Owen. You want to oh. say hi, Owen? Hi. Oh, he says hi. He's shy. <laughs> yeah, uh, the poltergeist looks so naturalistic. I thought it was a ghost. Oh, <laughs> oh, you gotta keep that up. I'm, please don't move it. That's okay, I man. No, no, that was just fine. That please was don't good. stay there. But uh, so after that, uh, my next experience was moving forward around that time, probably about yeah, it was about three, uh, on the Christmas tree during the uh, during Christmas, um, up where the star is, you know, on the top of the tree. Um, I was looking at the colors; they were just so vivid when I was younger. And I tuned into the top of the tree, and where the angel is supposed to be at the top of the tree, this this aura just got bigger and bigger, like a golden aura. And I saw a face, a distinctive face, more like an angelic face, who would say, um, just materializing. Right? I mean, I was awake, and I remember this. That was so vivid for about a, I was about three years old, three three and a half, and that's it. Looked at me and said, "You're okay. Everything's like you're safe." And uh, it was shortly after when I had that period, almost drowning. Mm -hmm. So it was around the same time. It sounded to me that you have connection to Angel. Yeah, I believe I Kind of watch over you and have connection to you. Yes, yes, very much so. And um, we I'm met, We met, so we met uh, Angel Gahil. Yes. Kind enough to speak about. I didn't publish one of his first channel. And I guess Gay, I should. Gay Hill actually in one of Jim a session with Jim. Uh, that was the very first one that came through for me. Was Gay Hill? They introduced himself, and I was like, "Wow, this is really neat." So. Yeah. So Gay Hill. Um, in 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 the first session, I was sort of very biological. I asked about the biological essence. Yes. And yesterday actually also was a comment about their biological essence from the Oversoul. Yes. Um, and then we spoke to Ar Archangel Michael. That was my communication with the Genetic Realm. But uh, basically they are messengers and they have personalities. They are not born. They are being made <laughs> by the God. And they are outside of time, but they play with time. So. The future for them is also unknown. Yes. They are playing the same thing as we are. So they, they have their learning. So they they have the, also their learning experience. And uh, they come and go into the reality. They are outside of dimensions. They are uh, non-dimensional. Yes. Uh, they're quasi-physical. They can materialize as anything they wish to. And... Uh, they eventually could die, but that death wouldn't be in our timeline. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't think I, they reincarnate. I don't. I, I mean, that's what Gahil said. I don't think they reincarnate, but somehow they are not worried about that. I think they live very long time. So. Um, I, I, go ahead. I, I remember Takur saying something about that. How, um, back in like the first one, Source branched off from itself it's like I think they were the first level or the creational level the golden ones part of the golden ones I believe or the second they came after that you know what I mean I don't know I, it doesn't resonate with me I don't think okay. she was talking about angels I think these were angelic beings but not the angels angelic right. angels basically are the system administrators of this major that's my understanding. So we live in a matrix reality, and somebody needs to program it. Have you read the Urantia book? I have it on the shelf, and it is, okay. uh, yeah, it is important, but uh, I didn't read much of it. Yeah, I skimmed through it and stuff, and it, it's it's fascinating. It's very complex and very fascinating. Yeah, that whole book to itself is like a multi-dimensional. It's Man, if anybody on Earth can, I know I was brought. Here. I will bring it. 
if anybody uh, gets a chance, check out that book called the Urantia book. It's U uh, R A N T I A, I believe. Urantia. It's fascinating. This book was given to me by to read by uh, abductee, uh, long, long, long term abductee. She volunteered to be uh, a contactee with, with the Grace. Her name is Rosemary. She lives ah. in Rochester. She is about 10 years older than I. Okay. Maybe five. And there is a couple of long interviews with her on my Steinberg channel. Yes. So I will post that on, on a human column. So for her it was a profound book. So she is very enlightened. She meets extraterrestrials frequently, mostly Zetas, Yael, um, you know, reptilians, all others. That would be an interesting question to ask um, Lakesh or Tukur or any of them about what's their connections or do they know of the Urantia book? You know what I mean? Like, what part of them or their history connected to this? Uh -huh. So Urantia book is, uh, I don't know if we can read here, but it is basically the whole structure of the higher realms. It's, yes. It has very little about physical. It's mostly what is beyond. And it's a channel book. It's a channel, long channel book with all Yes. Terms, and names, and stories. How it was all created. So it's all spelled out for those who want to understand. Ah. So yes, I don't know if an angels are reincarnating or they die. Michael, Archangel Michael, said they don't die ever. They are eternal. What was interesting when Takur talked about the golden ones and how, before even before the Lyrian civilization, how they wrapped the like the seraphic host or how they wrap themselves around different groups and they took them and they scattered them out into the universe. So I was wondering if that connection was with the, with the certain types of angelic energy, you know what I mean? Hmm. Maybe. That's interesting. So angels also, I think, we had an interview with the fairy. Fairies and elves are all sorts of, also sorts of uh, working bee, worker bees of the creation. They uh, are outside of mat matrix. Yes. And fixing it, building it, creating it. I think fairies mentioned they, they participate in creation of new species. Like so the elementals, yes. Like yeah, they, they do a lot with um, with um, nature in general. So like they, they can even be in the cities. There's a lot of um, a lot of stone-based elementals that are in city areas. It's fascinating the kind of the resonance that it give off. It's almost like a, a really cold, kind of dead feeling. It's, it's strange that cities give off that kind of vibe. Yeah, cities are very centered, very, I don't know, how do you say it? Um, it's its a very dense energy, you know, cities? Very dense energy. I grew up in, in a big city, in Moscow, which feels like Chicago, New York, Philadelphia. Yes. <laughs> uh, most, most, most resembling uh, Toronto, I guess, is the closest I can experience on this. Toronto is almost like, feels built Moscow. Yes. Feels like Moscow without much darkness. It's much less dark. Yes. So um, you know, I, I miss big cities. I live now in a rural area in, in Rochester, and I miss the vibe of the big city. Yes. Uh, there was a channel in where it was said. I don't know if it was our channel, and it was said that the earth, the matter, the stones have been. Uh, how do you call it? Transformed in a very unnatural ways in our tools, like cars and stuff, in our technological tools. I remember now it was Robert Shapiro channel, and uh, they more, many of them are unhappy in that state. Is that the one they call grandfather on on YouTube? Robert Shapiro. I think it's Robert. Shapiro. I don't. Robert Shapiro. I'm not sure about grandfather, but okay. in channel. About 20 books called The Explorer Race. We yes. are the Explorer yes. Race. I've heard of him, and um, uh, he's got a, I think, I believe, a YouTube channel also. And he, uh, they call the one that comes through the most, I believe, is called Grandfather. Hmm. But yes. Fascinating. In the books, it was Zush, who was. Yes. yes. I've skimmed over some of that. It's interesting. Yeah, most most influential me was his channeling of Jesus and his friends and uh, 
humans. That was yes. fun. It explained a lot about the nature of reality and m many others. So I was talking about the stone. So uh, the, the suggestion from the channel B was to meditate on the technology and to uh, love it and see its initial state in, in what we have. So if it is a car, kind of give it blessings, thanks for thank it for being transformed in a way it's useful, but basically bless his uh, the part of this mineral back to its natural state, which maybe is maybe rust and rock, and that's where it would feel more comfortable. So it was forced into that shape, which is very unnatural. So so it's a very new for me it's a very new look into technology. So we use those things. And speaking about technology, I lost this pen, but I know we never think about that, but you're right. I think it's it's like everything around us is just on a you know, it's just made up of atoms and you know molecules and particles. So if we are created you know, I always wonder that because it's like we came from the earth, you know, our physical forms, but the, yet the spirit is eternal. And so, and that makes so much more sense. I mean, before this planet was formed, you know, a bunch of gas swirling and stuff and, and the physics and how it comes together. And so we're basically stardust in a way. But the consciousness, you know what I mean? It's, it's interesting. Yes. I understand your point. Yes. Uh, you know, there is a signature in every atom or in every way there is a signature of where it has been and connected to everything. And yes, we are the Earth. Yeah. We are just uh, sort of, we borrowed ourselves from the Earth for a short while and now we are coming back. But, you know, that's the physical body. That's, you know, the energies of Earth. A vortex. We are the vortex which is span out of Earth molecules. And actually, these Earth molecules go through us quite fast. Our cells change fast. Uh, you know, the food, the air, the energies go through. So we are not actually, we are not matter. We are a vortex, and matter goes through that vortex. Yes, yes. It's like, and so that's when they say the God particle. Um, what I've heard is that that energy is in everything. It's just that energy, what we call God. It's like the um, a nano, nanotechnology, um, the the nanometer. Like uh, I think, what is it? Um, one billionth of a meter or something? Yes, uh, one billionth. Yes. One billionth. Well, they said the God particle. Actually, when our when our scientists can develop the instruments to detect it, mm -hmm. it's at one trillionth of. Uh, <laughs> What do you say, a meter? No. Or a, it's even smaller. That's, I don't know if there is any uh, final molar particle. But it's the energy, it, it's it's kind of like the glue that holds everything together. It, it's even smaller, I think, because it's in everything through all dimensions. It's the rate, it's the essence of what love is. It is, it perme permeates through everything. It's an energy that just, Holds everything together in a way too. Uh -huh. My and kids are very interested. What is the smallest particle? And uh, they are uh, fascinated by by quarks. And yes, smaller. but there's something even smaller than that. But then you know how small it goes. Uh, for me, kind of, I'm so focused on three, four, four densities. So for me, going down there is, I just lose interest. You know, for me, it's infinite yeah. going down there. But again, <laughs> the wave and particle duality. You know, it's all wave and it's all particle and it's all matrix and so on. Scientists will eventually find it. Yes. Uh, I think it's infinite. You will find the next one and the next one and the next one. But, uh, you know, the closest coming to that, what we get from channelings, is Bashar's, uh, Bashar speaking about frames per second. Um, please turn that way. Please turn that way down. Yes, frames per second. So. So the point is that uh, our reality has frames per second. And as, as I remember, he said billions. So billions is pretty specific number. It's like 10 billion, 1 billion, that sort of thing, 3 billion. So yeah. our reality is not continuous, not contiguous. We are a synthesized artificial reality. We live in artificial reality. And on your computer screen, what's your frequency rate on the screen? It's about 
60 hertz, 60 uh, hits per second. And our reality, real reality physical is about billions, which is 10 to the 8th, 10, 10 more zeros, so wow. 100 million times more past. So I don't know if our scientists ever went there, but you know we have some terahertz technology which are coming close to detecting that sort of uh, uh, what's it word fragmented nature of reality, binary. Uh, uh, there, there should be a word like frame nature of reality. Yeah, I remember Bashar talking about looking at film strip and seeing it per frame. You know, your reality is just like a you know, if you can move per frame, you know, be the, uh, how do you say it, um, if you were the one being the observer and being able to see these frames, you know, but you have to raise your vibration and eventually you would get to that point where you can just start to see uh, multi multi-dimensional, you know. So, it's interesting. So I, I, do, I don't have that word. So what that would fragmented nature reality? Uh, there is some some unit per slice per time. So uh, we need that word. I don't think Bashar pronounced it, but there is some nature fragmented nature of that. I wanted to share yesterday's experience. I don't have many physical manifestations. There was some, but not many. So right. last night there was a clear physical manifestation. We were Having trouble with technology during the Karais webinar, and at some point, he was popping in and out. His phone was disconnected, and it was clearly logically connected to what he was speaking. Basically, uh, yeah. the higher being didn't want his friend to speak, so they cut her off. And uh, when he spoke about Zeta by himself without channeling, they also cut him off because Zeta didn't want the exposure. But at some point, already after the after the end, when I stopped the recording, unfortunately I stopped the recording too quick, so now it'll be slow, or maybe it will we'll not stop it wherever, uh, and just will you know, until everybody leaves. So and after there was a discussion after we stopped the recording, and my pen, it has a, a copper here, I think it's bronze bronze tip on the end, so that the whole piece is bronze, and it's covered with silicon rubber. It, I was holding it like that. I didn't want to even touch the metal. I touched it like that. It warmed up to very hot. It wasn't burning. It wasn't about boiling temperature, but it was very hot. It was way hotter than human temperature. I estimated about 50, 55 degrees Celsius. I don't know what's, what's in the uh, I realized that also with uh, holding quartz crystals, that they heat up pretty quickly. So, yeah, with me. I was told it was because of the energy that um, you you give it or something like that. Because um, when I met the sidekick, he was like, "Do you have any crystals?" And I was like, "Well, my dad collects rocks and stuff, so I could see." And I brought this crystal out, and he was like, "I want you to hold this or keep it in your pocket for a really long time." And I'm like, "Okay." And at the end of the day, when I took it out, it was so hot, yes. and I was like, "Oh my gosh, why is this so hot?" And he was like. It's because the energy you're giving it when you're walking around all day. It's, it's not the pocket. It's not that you're sitting down. It's the energy absorbing. Yeah, and it was really interesting. So. No, it it wasn't only me. You know, experience. <laughs> For me, it was unusual. The first time ever I I observed that I converted it's 130 Fahrenheit plus minus. Did you did you write anything down with the pen last night? No, the there was nothing. No. Can you see it? It was, you know, no, there was nothing essential. It was, I don't think it was, I think it was random. But you know what? That's probably early it's stage of max of uh, what do you call um, automatic writing. I was just going to say that, yeah. Yeah, um, Maybe. Caroline and myself have been doing a little bit of it um, recently. There were some pictures online. And, um, yeah, it kind of looks, looks like you're going down that road a little bit, Matt. Yeah. Yeah, um, I've I've heard of other channelers that uh, have the same experience, and that's that really is. I think once you start to let your hand flow and move without really thinking about it, just let it guide. That is actually early a stage of channeling. It's it's automatic writing. Eventually, it might form into that, and then also it might bring out your verbal ability. Also, it yeah, it's, part of when you, it's kind of learning to let one part of your body go mm -hmm. and then letting another part yeah. go and then working your yeah. way up to a point where you're comfortable in, in letting another speak for you. 
and they said if you also it, it depends on which you feel try not to use your dominant hand use the opposite one no oh, I, I know that I use the opposite you know that is correct that is a symptom of that greetings Jaguar how are you my friend Jaguar Hi, Jaguar hello, everyone hello hello Dan Ryan Gabriel Max and Caitlin Hello. It is a pleasure to be here. Yes, I can confirm that both from my experience and intuition that automatic writing or spirit writing or whichever you call which wish to call it is a symptom, is a sign of channeling opening up. Yes. Uh, Gregor, are you in the mood to channel now? Yes, I'm also in the mood of inviting other people that have started in their journeys of channeling, namely Caitlin. Do you wish to practice some learn speaking today? Uh, not live because I feel kind of embarrassed when I do it in, in, on live. Yeah, that is an excellent challenge to overcome. <laughs> You don't have your webcam on, so it's just the voice at the minute. Exactly. I wish to challenge you that concept you, uh, you have of uh, somewhat rooted in shame or embarrassment <laughs> by simply saying, let yourself go, let yourself allow whatever happens to happen. Does that feel right to you? Yes. <laughs> yes, so I would say... Very good. Congratulations. You see. <laughs> You have just overcome part of a mental block. So I congratulate you for that. Well done, Caitlin. <laughs> Thank you. Good, good Way job. to go. Way to yes. go. There you have the proof and the evidence and the support that you are able at will as is anyone who wishes to do so. The biggest challenge to do whatever in life is to overcome our own doubts and fear and concepts of lesser self, if you would like. To be honest, I was scared to do it because I'm scared some person that I know is going to find it and be like, oh my god, she's such a weirdo, but... You know, that's what we were talking about the other day, Caitlin. You're right. It's yeah. It's... Overcoming what others think of us. Yeah, precisely. Yes. I don't think I need to worry about it because I have like. Once and I'm it, done high school, I'm just gonna be like, screw you guys. I really <laughs> don't care. Like I, I think I'm just becoming my real self. So. Exactly. Need to deal with it. I mean, it's it, awesome. It's always harder and more of a challenge when you have family and friends around you who really don't look at look down upon it. But yes. remember, it's just aspects of themselves that they haven't seen or haven't even dug into yet. So yes, it, just give it some time. But when they see your joy, when they see you in that moment, and they you're letting go, you're going to lift their vibration, and then they can match your around your frequency to say, ah, it's nothing to be feared. It's yeah. something that can be accepted. Mm -hmm. So give Thank it time. You. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, as you're as you're feeling scared of of what they might think as well, you um. They're also kind of scared of what's what they don't understand that you're doing as well. So it's kind of like um, you both need to kind of learn to understand each other to be able to come to a, an agreement. So it all starts with with understanding yourself. And as soon as high school finishes, I found that it was it was easy. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. then you don't see most of those people around that much anymore, and so you might have that one exactly. or two friend. And you can really maybe that one or like you said, find somebody that's around you that you really trust and build that maybe to practice channeling with. You know, someone that you can have that find that one person and just work with it. You know, and, yeah. and even on like like Jaguar was saying here, it's a perfect place to really open up. It's really yeah. nice. Thank you. Precisely, precisely. That was one idea that came through today that I am wishing to share. Uh, Something like a language gym 
if you'd like. Something that would allow a space, a, a safe space, a safe time for people just to practice their languages, to feel supported by others who do so, that do not judge them, and are, are here open-heartedly to support them. So I wish to invite others to participate in that if they feel uh, wish to do so. I, um, so maybe uh, some of the sessions can be broadcasted and also some of the sessions can be hangouts without broadcast and this way people mm -hmm. uh, will be much more open and also there could be a limited audience so only people who know each other would participate that will be even more protection. Correct, correct. I think that is an important criterion for some people in their beginning stages of mm -hmm. let's say coming out of the skills and uh, that for that to be chosen I think it's very important to include people's feelings and opinions check with them if they wish to do it in private with a restricted number of people or if they already feel like uh, publishing them yes My, I I'm uh, I'm one for that Jaguar um, uh, I I'm one that needs to have a little bit more privacy before I can let go. It's just the yes. one that the yes. oh, Definitely. Thank you. I understand. I have that same personality type, Brian. <laughs> I, I fully understand. That is the reason why my camera is not on at I this understand. time. And my true uh, earthly identity is not divulged yet. So I fully understand that. I fully honor and respect that. Thank you so much. I, I just... Uh, I'm just the opposite. If it is not broadcasted, then uh, I lose completely the interest. <laughs> yes, Max, that's an, a very interesting aspect of being human. As Brian several times has said before, the diversity, the, the differences are richness. We just need to find people that resonate with each other in their preferences, bring them together, and the people that do not resonate, let them do something else. And I think that's a very important point for any project and specifically for human colonies. To allow people to, let's say, cluster together that, ha that have like mind, like preferences. With, with no judgment, just uh, so that it is more effective and more efficient for everyone. I guess it's called introversion, extroversion. Some people tweet what they have for lunch, for dinner, for and what they do every moment. If they don't tweet it, it's uh, it's not worth doing for them. Mm. I, I invite uh, whoever wants to come through you to the channel if you like to. Aha, Katini. <laughs> Caitlin. Yes, Caitlin. Jaguar, I've got a question set for you uh, before before you start letting anyone else in. Um, do you, do you know of a of a Lyran called Atakir? Atakir. Yeah, it might it might be spelt differently or said differently, but mm. yeah, my first my first um, I guess communication with a Lyran. Um, I, I I first thought it was a uh, Hakatini, uh, Hakatini, and um, it, it they definitely made sure that I was getting the name right. They were like, no, no, you are wrong. It's Atakir. And just are you are you able to spell that? Um, I think it's A T A R K I R. There may be a um, a dash in between, but I'm not sure. A T R K I R. It might be A T A R or A T A K I R. Atarkir. Yeah. Atar Atarkir. Yes, I can check. Do you speak Lyran, Dan? I have um, a sense you've I had some experience. Excuse me? I only know Wuha at this Wuha. moment. Um, Wuha. Been, that's the one. Wuha. Very good. The, um, Arcturian starts to come through in my mind, but um, yes. it's, not, it's not confident enough to be projected yet, I guess. Is it that the ling language isn't confident enough, or is it that you are projecting a part of yourself, a fear maybe, onto the language? I'm definitely causing some kind of block myself, yes. Yes, congratulations for that level of awareness. That is very good. That will be of assistance in your path, being aware of that. We all do that, by the way. Please do not take this 
speaking and this tone of speaking as having over overcome fully that. That is part of this experience of being human, of having a human mind. We all have fears, we all have uh, difficulty accepting and embracing that as part of ourselves and we all have escape and coping mechanisms such as projection and others so accepting is the first part being aware is the first step and then moving on to acceptance and you see from there things will unfold quickly if you choose to do so thank you very much you're most yes. welcome. Yeah. You are right. You are very right. Yes. Kuha kata na kaitlinia ahati kianara. Wash kuha. Gosh, God. Gosh, God. Yeah, yeah. Wash. Wash Yeah. Yeah. Kaha kukua tana ahakaka tia sa kutie na ha. Yes, may I make a suggestion? Try and breathe a little bit slower and fuller. <laughs> so you will see the language will flow even easier. Okay. Kahaki. 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 Excellent. Okay. Very well. <laughs> we may start now if you wish. Wonderful. I hope Aha comes through. Very well. I am here. It's as as quick and easy as wishing it to, to be so. Greetings to all that are attending. My name is Aha Kitini. Well, Greetings, dear one. Now, this is Brian. Hi. Much love to you. Much love and light to you, Brian. It is an honor to be in your presence again, as in the presence of all that gather here today and all that will see this recording. Hello. I'm, I'm le learning to let go more and more, and just uh, you're encouraging me, so thank you to open the channel. Yes, Brian. You are also encouraging many others, and Hello, Gabriel. It is a very high honor to be in your presence also. I sense you have a question or a comment, Gabriel. Is that true? I was wondering, am I close to channeling or not? Yes. Yes, you are. And I wish to express this idea for all that are attending and for all that will see this recording. You already have, during this recording, proof if you'd like, evidence, if you'd like, for those minds that require those ideas to shift into acceptance. It is as quick and easy as wishing it to be. If you wish it, whatever it represents for you, may it be channeling or any other skill or ability you wish to develop, you are your own best ally or your own worst enemy, if you'd like those ideas. For me, it comes through feeling, like I'm starting feeling closer and closer, and that I'm getting very close, and I'm going, becoming better and better all the time, so yes, that's Gabriel. amazing for me. Yes, that is true, and you've just used a very important word to represent a very important idea, which is feeling. In your society, you've been heavily conditioned to be centered in your head. I've addressed this issue several times before, and I've suggested that you center your attention in your hearts. This is a very difficult idea to practice for many of you, especially those of you who are, let's say, left brain dominant, which is a societal tendency and also a gender tendency, especially for males. So as you shift into your feeling, Gabriel, you notice things accelerate. Is that true? Yes, like you getting very, I just have a strong feeling like come, energy comes through my entire body. 
it yes. becomes when I try to meditate, I can't meditate. When I feel meditate, I just stop meditating yes. immediately. Precisely. You gave that same example in an earlier transmission, and that is something I wish to reinforce that idea that following your feelings more than paying attention to your thoughts will guide you in the correct decision-making process. Right, right now I feel like I feeling feeling it, and then then some blockages come up, mm -hmm. and then then it stops for a moment, and then they just go away and continuing. So it's opening up inside of me more and more. Yes, very good, Gabriel. Do you notice what you do with your feeling, with your attention, with your focus, when you notice those blocks coming up? Do you notice what you, so to speak, do? That yes, allows I, you to move through them. Uh, yes, I allow them to be them themselves, and then it kind of stops. Yes, precisely. I'm not trying to fight them. Exactly. That is it. That is it. Thank you for that example, Greg, Gabriel. That is very powerful, and that is a key for those who wish to, let's say, pick it up and use it to unlock the locks inside themselves. Just noticing, just bringing your awareness to feeling whatever comes up without judgment, without attachment, without rejection or resistance is a very powerful practice if you choose to do so. Because I kind of feel that people want so much to go into meditation and that creates a disbelief that they can't go into meditation. So, exactly, it's a self-fulfilling if, if negative I say, idea. If I say to a person to stop thinking about apples, that person will have a hard time not thinking about apples. Exactly, very good. That is precisely what I meant with a self-reinforcing negative idea or belief. When you focus negatively, you cannot not bring your focus from whatever you are already focusing on. So, very good. Thank you for that example. Do you have another part to your question or comment? Just that I feel very close, but am I close or...? Another very powerful idea that has been shared through other channel, which is Nick, is that you already are there. You're already there. Yes, I heard that I have been channeled linked yes. in some ways before. Yes, yes. But I just ha have to remember. Yes. Only yeah. yourself holds yourself back from whatever it is you wish, you or anyone else. This is a universal notion I wish to share at this time. Another very powerful idea that... I think it's the same with me too. I Last night, I felt like something was trying to talk to me because um, usually when, if I do get something telepathic, I hear this really high frequency in my ears and somebody is just like, hey there, but like, um, I've only had this a few times, but I really felt strongly some, something was going to happen, and I yeah, was that, just too scared, and I think I scared it away. Yes. Caitlin, that, that happens to me also. I've had the high pitch frequencies yeah, in my... Is, I what is that? that? Um, I was told that it was either a spirit, somebody is there trying to communicate with you, or it's something else. I'm not sure. I hear it a lot, though, and... Um, it's like every day. It's not, it doesn't go away. It's always there. But Sometimes when it gets really it can high, be tests. yeah. Hmm. So I heard that. Um, what was it? I watched um, a really old webinar that Max was in with Jim, and some guy was saying that negative entities were trying to contact him and get and get his permission. And I was like, what? 
and I've never even heard of that, but... Yeah, I wouldn't focus on that. Like I said, just focus yeah, on that either. letting go of the positive, and it, you're right. You're, you're, you're always surrounded by love, yeah. no matter what, and you just know that in your heart. So, yes, mm -hmm. bringing that through to the surface. I, I've had sessions, too, with Jim, and it's bringing more of our spirit to the surface is what it is. It's bringing that heart energy out. Oh, let me interrupt you, Brian. So uh, uh, when somebody is in channeling state, let's focus on them and not to carry the conversation outside much because um, for them it is a special state. It's like a big uh, nuclear power station is, in, uh, is, uh, is feeding that, that uh, channeling uh, channel, and it's, it's a waste of channeling if, if you just carry the conversation away. Max, I wish to lovingly disagree. All right. Although I respect your idea, <laughs> your, the intention, especially the intention behind your idea, which is to be of the higher service and of the most effective and efficient use of the channeler's energy, which is a very honorable, honorable idea. In this case, the energy present is of a very familiar and of a very... Uh, let's say, easy flowing conversation. So for this group, at this time, this is not to be interpreted as valid for all future situations. At this time, it is acceptable for this channel and for myself for, to allow different formats, which is also something I wish to encourage human colonies to experiment with. So, so uh -huh. far, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, last channel in... Uh Jaguar channeled for about two hours straight, and after that, for about four days, he felt sick. Yes. So, uh, how much time do you think would be good for his body to channel today? That is a very variable idea. In this case, somewhere along half, mm -hmm. an hour and a half would be an acceptable threshold for his energy at the time. Are you capable? Also, Yes. Are you capable of uh, judging it, the time for yourself? You are from different time, life, uh, time, space. So, would you be able to finish the conversation in time? Do you need help with timing? Yes, I I accept your idea. Also, this I wish to uh, propose to the channel as another learning experience for himself to be attuned, more attuned with his own body and honoring his signals from his body, knowing and prompting him when to, uh, let's say, wrap up a given session. This is also of use for him. And also a reference for all of you who wish to channel, be aware of your bodies and respect the signals your body gives you when you access this state. For it is a very important aspect for your health to manage properly your energy when you are in a channel. So I have set up the timer for 45 minutes. Uh, would it be convenient for you or you are fine with uh, judging the time yourself? I that, think is a, that is of use. That is acceptable. You may express when the time is up, so to speak. That is of use. For I just wonder if, if on, your, on your side you have the timer. Uh, an earth timer which you could use. Do you need my technical help or you're, you're, you're equipped with those technologies? We are able to do so, but in this case we wish to allow you to express the idea and the initiative you have put forth. So, And we also wish to thank you for taking that initiative and being proactive. All right. Uh, Caitlin and Brian, I interrupted you. Please continue. Oh. Yes. Uh, I, I think I've seen you in my dreams, but I don't really remember it. Yes, you are referring to Brian or to myself? Kitty. You, you. Aha, Kitty. Yes, that is true. You expressed you wished for me to visit. I have visited. We have been in communication. So, yes, as you see, another idea that you can have as evidence that things are as easy or difficult as you wish for them to be. So, congratulations. And uh, also, uh, I think I've seen your face too, but it, it didn't look, it wasn't like, re, it wasn't like right there, or like, hey, I'm physical, but it was energetic looking, and it was, 
I seen the bottom of your mouth, or maybe it was somebody else's, but it was like a lion like mouth, and I was like, oh my gosh! And it was I seen the mane, and it was it was like yellow energy, and it was different, and that was, it was really interesting. I've, I've had I've had the same experience type with that too with Laren energy or with others and I just wanted the confirmation with that yes in both cases I have visited you you are in communication with myself I am in communication with you thank you very so, much yes here you have a confirmation for your awake state mind or your conscious human mind that is true for both of you uh huh. Uh, yes, Max. There was uh, yesterday I spoke to Zina Zinaida, uh, yes. an Armenian from uh, California. Yes. Um, did you have a contact with her? Yes. Is there any anything else you can add? As uh, I have expressed before. Through this channel, I tend to have abstract responses to abstract questions or open-ended answers to open-ended questions. So okay. if you wish for a All more right. effective communication, if you can be more specific, I believe that would be of higher service and more uh, effective use of our time. All right. She, you, you, you showed yourself to her a face for about yes. one second. Yes. And she's a painter, uh, and ask her to paint you for us. Would it be appropriate? Yes, that is acceptable. Uh, if, for the time being, you maintain that information withheld from publication. Oh. In other words, yes, she may use that information to bring an image of myself into an art form, but I request respectfully that you do not publish that for the time being. The appropriate time will come in a near future. As near as, again, I wish to remind you, as your collective agreements allow. It's all up to you how quick things move along, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Do you channel with open eyes or closed eyes? I prefer to channel with closed eyes, even though I'm capable of opening them. I choose to do so, and I also take this opportunity to address some of your questions, let's say, Maxine. Yes. That, and also earlier communications we have had through this uh, medium of human colonies, hangouts through Google. Yes. that the visual aspect is deeply connected with your head center. And this, if not managed in the best possible way, let's say, it can be very distracting. So in the beginning stages, it is of use to keep the eyes closed so that you may focus easy so that your focus is easier so that you do not get distracted as much does that does this is this of use for you specifically max i feel yes, that yes, this was an obvious, important yes. informant information for you yes it's quite obvious yes uh, i yes. appreciate that uh, crime channels with open eyes but uh, most of other channels channel with closed eyes uh, I have an unrelated question which just popped today. Uh, maybe it is related somehow. Do angels reincarnate? Do angels reincarnate? I appreciate your level of awareness on the discontinuity of the questions. And that is also something I wish to address and express for future reference and for the progression and acceleration of the effectiveness and efficiency for all of your activities. If you are able to prepare your questions in advance and chain them or link them together in a more sequential or logical structure, this would be of higher use to all involved. So I wish to express that for your most recent initiatives in, in the sense of 
higher organization, higher structuring of the human colonies. That would be of benefit to you and all that are trying and actually achieving to assist you. Addressing your question now. That is somewhat... My comments on that are somewhat limited. I might, might not be the best entity to ask about that. I would suggest you would address that to Nick or to this channel in a future time, let's say, so that he is accessing other entities than myself, which are in that particular frequency band, let's say. Uh, OK, coming back to the previous series of questions, have you visited me? Yes, I have, as uh, per your request. Thank you much. I don't remember anything. I wish yes. to remember at least something. Yes, Max, addressing that specifically, I wish to express that even though you have made positive steps towards a more relaxed state of mind, let's call it that, I wish to remind you of the importance and examples have been given today of just focusing on your body as a whole, of bringing your attention from your head into all of your body and many practices as I have shared be before in earlier transmissions are of use for you to attain this. Walking, yes. baref walking barefoot on a backyard. I believe you do have a backyard. Is that correct? Uh, I, yes. I yes. did walk in bare feet on backyard and I did walk in on the, on the beach of Ontario Lake actually a couple of times since the transmission. And also I practiced what you said with a full body awareness, yes. Very good. That is of more very high use for you. And if you maintain consistency in those practices, that will continue to assist you. I heard, yes. I heard a voice uh, last meditation. I heard a voice coming through. Yes. Um, speaking about implants. Um, it was some, somewhat unexpected. It was a human voice uh, with some strange personality, actually, some too uh, trivial personality, I would say. But it was talking about implants, yes. And it came like a few phrases came through which I consciously captured. Mm -hmm. I just wonder if it was a, a transmission or it was, uh, I guess, four-dimensional transmission or something else, or it was just a dream which I captured. Yes, you are already beginning to access because you are, again, you have taken to heart many of the suggestions that have been relayed, and here you have the results, if you'd like to put it that way. You are beginning to access more than you were before you took to heart and you implemented those suggestions. So yes, you are already beginning to access some transmissions that are being relayed to you. Yes, that is correct. Do you have an insight switching back to that experience with the... Oh, you didn't hear it. Yesterday my pen became really, really hot. Do you know what was that? You were accessing, uh, as has been commented, I believe today or in an earlier trans transmission, if I'm not mistaken, automatic or spirit writing. I see. Thank you. You have been oh, exploring that. Is that correct? I have you been exploring yes, I did. that? I did, I did some of that, yes. Thank you. That was a very specific signal and a confirmation of what ideas I have expressed before. Your body giving you feedback. Your body showing you the way, if you'd like that idea. That Thank is you. a specific... You required some specific and uh, physical manifestations. And there you have one example of the infinite possibilities that lie before your choice and anyone's choice for that matter. Yes, you may proceed. Uh, I, 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 need, I need now to step out. I invite others to speak to Jaguar and uh, I invite Brian <coughs> to serve us if you don't mind. Yes, I wish to comment on that, Max. 
Maxim, okay. that is very that is very positive. Whenever you let's say pass the mic, whenever you give anyone else the opportunity to facilitate a communication, that is very positive for all of us. So I wish to congratulate you on that and all that wish to express themselves through that window of opportunity, let's say. So I welcome anyone to express yourself at the time. I, I, I will come back soon. Bye. Yes. I, w I wonder if I have visited any of the colonies. Do you want a yes or no answer, Gabriel? Or you can speak more. I wish to give you a yes or no, for it is more effective. Yes, you have. Okay. okay. Yes, you have. Because um, you have I... wish to do so. Okay. Yes, Brian. Yes. Um, <clears throat> um, I've been in, I don't know, all my life, my friend, I've felt these energies of, I've met so many different beings and being on the ships, and I, I just feel like I'm a bridge of some sort. You know yes. what I mean? Yes, that is true. That is correct. That is, that is one of your, let's say, most relevant skills. Yes. And that is mine is really learning to just let go of fear of what others think. Yes. And just and let it flow. Yes. Yes. And you have been quite effective at that. And I wish to express to all that are attending and will see this recording that Brian is a embodiment of that idea of being heart-centered, of being aware that you have a mind and ideas circulate through your mind, but that you are much more than just that mind and that most of all you are able to live embodied, to live heart-centered, to yes. live with a more expanded awareness than just your mind. And this, again, is an idea I have been, am, and probably will keep on reinforcing that is of utmost importance. So I wish to congratulate the, you on that, Brian. You have been very successful, and you have been a living example for this group and all that come into the honor of your presence in your life. Oh, thank you very much, my friend. Much love to you. You are most welcome. Ahakutini. Yes, who is this? Uh, this is Dan. Dan, yes. Hi, it's nice to, nice to uh, properly speak to you. Yes, it's a very uh, high honor to be in communication through this medium at this time with you also. I have uh, three questions, one of which is, um, is unrelated to the others. Um, but uh, I was speaking with Jaguar, but do you know a being called Atakir? I believe that they are Liren. Atakir? Yeah. Yes. One moment, please. Thank you. Yes, I am aware of him. Okay, cool. Um, I, I know that uh, it's probably... It's, it's a bit rude asking for more information on them because they they seem to want to speak to me personally, I guess. Um, yes, that is correct. Your intuition you... is very attuned to your truth, and that is correct. Your, your intuition is correct. That is for private communication at the time. Okay, yes. thank you. Um, do you have any particular relationship to, to this being? Or, or is it a different, uh, different uh, ship or planet? My comments are limited. Nonetheless, I wish to satisfy at least part of your answer by saying that, yes, I am in communication with this entity. Is that okay. satisfying enough for now? Yeah, that's fine. That's great, thanks. Very good. You had a third question, I believe. Yes. Um, Nick was saying last night about, um, well, the, the race of um, canines. I was wondering if, if, if it's not a, a rude question, because um, I know that there's been a little bit of problems between the feline and the canine race over many, many uh, time frames. But um, what, is the, what is the state of the, the affairs between the two races now? 
because we're not we're not really told much about the the, the kind of the, the state between the feline and the canine. Yes. Can you or do you wish to place a specific question? Are you asking just about the general state of affairs at the time? Um, it's more along the lines of why why do we only hear about feline races and not really about the the humanoid um, canine races? Yes, that is a more understandable structure of a question for this particular channel at this time. Yes, thank you for rephrasing that. As in many domains, let's say, my, and I hope and I believe you are aware that I have restrictions that I must observe, my comments are limited. My comments are limited in many matters, as is this one. Nonetheless, I wish to satisfy also the least part of, or please excuse that, one moment. Hmm. Again, my comments are somewhat limited, but an earlier reference has been made in an earlier transmission regarding the insectoid group of species that they have, we called it at the time, an elusive behavior pattern, let's call it. Something similar happens to the kinds of entities you are referring to. And we wish to honor that choice of being more elusive or private, if you'd like, by withholding from further comment at the time. I may also express that in due time when, let's say, the diplomatic arm of those species become, of what, become aware and they will become aware of these communications and your desire to know more about them, they will express themselves in the time and the manner they choose to do so, if you can be satisfied by this answer. Yeah, that's wonderful, thanks. You, you, you pretty much welcome. summed up the, the second part of the, the question I was just thinking anyway, so thank you very much for that. Very good. You are most welcome. Do you notice how synchronous that is? <laughs> I've been noticing them a lot more lately. Yes, and that is a key. This comment was not by randomness, let's say. It in itself was a synchronous comment for the idea to be more fully expressed within and around yourself, that you are very well becoming aware of the synchronous nature of your experience when you wish it to be so, when you are becoming more attuned to yourself, when you are taking to heart the many suggestions from the many sources of information you have been receiving and putting them to practice and embodying them and centering your attention in all of your body and giving special attention to your heart. So congratulations to you. You will see more and more shifting around yourself by I, continuing to focus on that. Yes, Brian. I, I felt that I Oh wow! It's a, it's this is it's just an honor to to work with you, my friend. I'm I, I can yes. feel the vibration. I I in my head in the crown, but I, I it, it's 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 like when I let go, I'm starting to this, these words come out of me. This wisdom just pours out. You know, it's interesting. It's really interesting. Yes. Fascinating. Fascinating. Again, again, thank you for your comment. Again, that is another very powerful example of how easy things can be when you choose them to be so. I, I, and by I, choosing to do so, I mean just allowing, oh, just it's in the state relaxing. Of yes. yes, that is all that is reco required. When we refer to work upon something you wish to develop, yes. we're, what we are actually trying to convey is that notion, that work is not required. 
allowing is what is truly required. Stepping out of your own way, so to speak, is the only thing that is truly required. It's that. I, yes, go ahead. Yes, I had the sense that Gabriel, but also Caitlin, wanted to express themselves, and I wish to honor the se sequence in what in which that happened. So, Caitlin, do you wish to express yourself? Oh. <laughs> yes. Sure. Uh, I want to ask a question about the language. Um, yes. How exactly does this work? I mean, is there a Lyran that's assigned to you that is teaching you this, or because when I first actually started speaking this, I had two words in my head, Aishkata, I don't know, and it makes me wonder, was there a Lyran saying, hey, just say these words, or um, I'm not really sure, or did I just do it myself? As you have expressed, you have many questions. For more effective <laughs> communication, I sorry. wish sorry. to... It is not a problem, <laughs> I'm just... In doing this exercise that I'm doing at, the, at this time, I'm actually assisting you in becoming more clear in your communication so that you can further your allowing of the channeling states you are already beginning to attain in some manners. So, do you wish to place a, a question or the several questions you have one at a time? <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it is not a problem. There is nothing to be sorry about. Oh my gosh. Just mindful, just aware. It is okay. <laughs> it is the workings of the human mind. Nothing just, to be constricted about or ashamed about. Yeah, I'm, I'm just such a curious person, so I, I like Yes, learning. that is true. Um, so, okay. Um, all I know is there is somebody there just pushing me, telling me to to go when when it's time to do to speak and um, so I, I wonder if that is Illyrian is is this Illyrian that is doing this that's trying to teach me what I gather from your questions is if you have a Illyrian entity assisting you at yes. the time yes. yes that is correct um, that is true is is it okay to know at the time or is it not a good time to or is, am I not supposed to know? At the time, through this communication format which is, which is being published, it is not correct. At the same time, it is correct for you to know. So I would suggest a different form of communication with this channel. Maybe the same format but without broadcast would be appropriate. Okay. So, or, or other format of communication. Yes. Alrighty. Uh, I don't really know how, because we're, we're live right now, so, and I think you'd be gone after Max turns this off, so, um, I'm not really sure, but I, all I know is I, I'm glad that I am getting assisted, so, I just know whoever yes. it is, they're just, they're, <laughs> the <laughs> language, the language is coming, you can feel it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know when they really want me to say it because it's like they get kind of mad at me <laughs> when they're like, just say it. It's funny. Maybe a suggestion also is take maybe, like you said, uh, automatic writing or you t put a pencil in your hand and uh, you're not your dominant hand. Use the opposite and just allow the energy to flow. Yeah. To work with that if you want. I'm if just... it's your choice. Yeah, I just I just know they're <laughs> I think yeah, Sabrina channeled Illyrian yesterday and Illyrian said that it was discipline. I need I need discipline. It's just funny, it's, but <laughs> it's yeah, it, it's really it, it is. It's the energy of allowance and what you were just bringing through and, and speaking that language. You right there, you just got to keep believing and trusting in yourself. Yeah. You, you have um, it. I know it was Whoever is teaching me this, I mean, yesterday I took a really long time and I was like really speaking this language for like a full 10 to 15 minutes and um, all I know is they were really satisfied and they just stopped <laughs> for a while. So I'm, what, I'm glad. What do you feel that, that is stopping you? The one thing. What is it? What is it? What is your fears, your doubts, your worries? Is it just the others around you? 
Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, because I just I feel like somebody I know is gonna find this and they're gonna be like, just just being so negative about it. And I I hate sometimes empathic is being a gift, and then other times it's like at the same time it's like hell because people put you down so much you just feel that impact. It's like somebody is like stabbing you in the heart, and it's it really hurts. But um, that's what I I hate feeling that. But at the same time, it's a gift because I love feeling other things. Yeah. But, the, um, the feeling that you feel when it comes to that, of what others think, your your the belief system, the structure of the belief. Like you said, once you, mm, you feel what, what others will think, but then just like I said, let it go and say, ah, what's the really nothing? You're in total command of your, your emotions, your body. And just allow that to flow. Don't, don't put any restriction on yourself. You're okay. doing great, you know. Thank you. <laughs> You're doing fine, and keep, right and especially with the mother around you, father, or the, your siblings around you, your brothers, sisters. Just like you said, let find the space that, that you feel the most comfortable, and that you can have the privacy of working all one on one to better hone in on your allowance. You see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. We held some space for this discussion while asking Dan to hold. Dan, I sense you had a question or comment. Do you wish to express yourself now? I actually did, but then I started going inwards and completely forgot what I was thinking about. Very well. That is not a problem if you but, wish to hold, or do you well, wish believe, to express something now? I believe you may have you may have received the message that I was sending in thanks, so mm -hmm. that could have been it as well. Yes, and it has been rece received with the highest joy. Thank you for that intention and transmission. We Thank wish you. to honor you back with such a high vibration of love and light by giving you a brief blessing specifically for you but all that are attending also and all that will receive this transmission. It's a very high honor. I am also aware that Gabriel wished to express himself. Gabriel, do you have a question or comment? Uh, I have a few things. Uh, I, how do you feel us now? Do you feel our energy or, or how close can you feel us now? Yes, I feel your energy. When you are asking, there are many layers to your question that I may interpret as individuals and as a collective. Is that correct? Yes. I'm, wo yes. I'm wond wondering what did you feel when you first encountered humanity? Was mm -hmm. it confusing for you or...? No, not at all. Again, I wish to remind you that our link, our bonds, our connections to the human species are very ancient. As such, we have grown very close to you, in a sense. So... Have, have I met you? Hmm. Are you asking if you have met me personally? In some ways. In this lifetime, are you asking this time. time, very good. One moment. Yes, I have. Yes, you have. Yes, we have met each other. Could you share anything about that, or is that something? Yes, I could, but at the time, I do not wish to do so. If you can, please understand that. It's just okay. a matter of timing. Yes. Is it privacy also? Or? Yes, yes. I'm looking after you in a sense. I'm protecting yourself, not only respecting the protocols that I must abide by, but also looking over 
your best interest, if you'd like. What I understand is, as human beings, we are allowed to involve with each other more and can help each other changing our belief system, but you are not allowed to change our belief system. Yes, that is correct. It's so some, some belief is. system is better for us to find here on Earth, not together with extraterrestrial. It's I did not understand correctly. No, I, I, I was just thinking or I, out loud. Oh, I understand. The fact that I expressed that I am not wishing to comment on something because it is of our understanding your higher interest that brings some kind of confusion into if we are interfering with your beliefs. Belief structure, is that it? Am I understanding no, correctly? No, 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 I meant in general when it is contact us through Shannon, they don't want us to change our belief system, uh, force things upon us. They want us to find things for ourselves. Yes, That's, that is correct. That, that is, is correct. The, that is the exploration of um, being the human. Exactly. It is the, the human experience coming down in density, coming down and to feel this type of density, to allow to experience the experience itself, of life itself, to this yes. level, this degree. Yes. yes. That is correct, Brian. Thank you for sharing. That is correct. That is what you could call as a core challenge or core aspect of the human experience. I sense we have another presence in the group. I believe it is Frantisek. I'm not sure I am pronouncing that correctly. Yes. Welcome. Yes, thank you. Welcome. Uh, May you express the correct way of communicating your name? Frantisek. Frantisek. Welcome, yeah. Frantisek. Do you have Welcome. a question or comment? Yeah. Uh, I had, uh, I just wanted to say to Caitlin that uh, uh, the fear might be uh, just that uh, it um, actually could be true. So if she faces that, if you, Caitlin, faces face that, uh, face that fear and you just say uh, whatever, uh, do, it does not matter, yeah. you know. Thank you. Um, so then you yeah. can move forward. Yeah. And, and the one thing to remember, dear one, it's when you confront an individual or person that might not understand this, don't don't hold the anger too long. Just let it go and just say, ah, they haven't understood me because I need to use a language which they can understand. I need to rephrase it in a way that they could mm, maybe grasp it a little bit more. You know what I mean? Yeah. To be honest, I don't feel angry. I, I'm just... Yes. I'm just like, okay, here's the scenario. If somebody yeah. walked up to me and was like, oh, you're, you're dumb, you don't understand all this, and it's, I'd just be like, oh. And I'd just start laughing because um, I just think it's funny. I mean, I, I react to things really differently sometimes, but, like, um, I, just, I don't know. I think it's funny, and I, I just laugh it off because it's like I know what I see. It, it's not – some people just don't have – they don't believe in that – Stuff, and I'm proud that I'm at this age. I'm so young, and I'm I'm awakened, and I'm going through these changes because I know nobody in my area who knows about this stuff and is my age. I know no adults, no older people, nobody in my area who knows this. So I'm very glad, and I'm proud that I actually I know this stuff because ever since I was a little kid, I needed to find something out, and I just know this is it because I'm so satisfied that I, I found what I needed to find. So I did so much research and so many things. I thought it was ghosts, entities, but all along I knew it was this. I needed to know my mission, needed to know, and I found what it was. So I'm really happy. And those, around, those around you will be affected in some way, shape, or form. I think they'll so be affected yes. if I channel 
in a you know in a positive down it's all for the positive it really is it comes was as long as you are coming from the heart you never have anything to ever worry about mm -hmm. so yeah also aha katini this is a really weird question i'm so sorry if this is really weird oh wait he muted himself oh okay yes i am here and i wish to express <laughs> that it has been said through other mediums in the past there is no such thing as stupid or wrong questions. I wish to express that you may choose to do so if you wish to, to do so, to stop wronging yourself. That is what is what you are subliminally doing whenever you think you have a wrong, stupid, or any other negative adjective question. This is what we are speaking in with um, allowing yourself to be the observer, Caitlin. And just uh, through the day, even if you can do it for five minutes a day or ten minutes, uh, observe your thoughts, your emotions, what drives you, what moves you, and and see where the negativity comes up, where any part of it, where it, where you feel that you have to uh, control or where you have to uh, push or pull. Observe all of that and see why. What part of you can just let go of that and see and get in touch with your shadow side of yourself to find out what is holding you back truly from allowing. You see. Yes, you have a question, Katie. Uh, it's funny. Um, okay, so the only reason why I'm asking this is because I, I think I seen your face in a dream. I'm not sure. Maybe it was a different layer in. Um, whoever this Lyran was, he was wearing a black suit, body suit. Was that you? Did you have a black suit? No, it is. It it was not me at that time. Ah, what? Why can't I remember you? Yes, you can. You just have <laughs> to wish to do so and allow yourself to do so. However, okay. there are mechanisms, maybe this is not the best word, there are mm, capabilities within yourself to protect yourself and to allow your other capabilities to express themselves at the right time for you. Does that make sense? Is that clear? Yes, it's clear. Thank you. So maybe at this time, that is what is happening. You are accessing some information in some states of being, and when you are in this state of being, you do not have the same level of access, let's call it that. Mm -hmm. just, just maybe because it is not the best choice for yourself at the time to do so, to access that information. However, in due time, it shall be accessed when it is correct for you. Okay, thank you. You are most welcome. However, I sense you still have another part that is questioning within yourself. Is that true? Um, not really. Uh, I can't really think about anything right now. I'm just thinking about that Lyran I've seen. I'm wondering who he was, but I don't think that's good to ask right now. I don't think... I don't know if he would want to be exposed like that. How do you feel? If you shift, I suggest you do so if you wish to do so, if you shift your attention from your head and wondering, that wandering sense in your head into your body and ask yourself, do I wish to know this? I do. I do. I wish to know why he was in front of me just looking at me. Because <laughs> so, that's what I see. I see him. Mm -hmm. He was brown. He was he had a, he was brown, mm -hmm. um, brown fur. I don't know his eye. I forget his eye color. I think it was yellowish. And um, he was just looking at me. And I maybe he was talking to me. And he just stopped talking. He was just looking at me. But um, he was wearing a black suit. And it's weird. Aren't Lyrans tall? Because I I think I was the same height as him, or maybe I was a little bit shorter. But. Yeah, I do wish to know who he was, and can I know who he is? <laughs> That's just my question. Yes, you you may, but not at the time. Okay. Do you know when a good time would be? 
Only you can answer that, Caitlin. Very good answer, Brian. It's up to you. It has mm -hmm. to do with your own process, with your own time. Mm -hmm. And again, yeah. it has to do with allowing. Allowance. Okay. That's that's so true. It's it's command command versus control. What do you allow in that moment? In that moment, when you come when it comes to you, you'll know it. It's a knowingness. It really is. It's a, it really is. Caitlin, as soon as you you said I wish to um to know who it was, you you started to reel off some details as well. So potentially it's just the well it is just the intention of of wanting to to do it. Precisely. It will, it will come to you at some point. Exactly. It's as if you can't frame it this way if you choose to do so. It's a kind of, uh, let's call it, challenge for yourself. You are dealing with the negative belief structures that are part of yourself at the time. And as you unfold and as you free yourself of those and you reformat that belief structure, you will see that you will begin to access more and more information as has been just said you wish to do so as you become clear as you ask yourself or as has been suggested before you find a trusted being that asks you if you want something or not you will become more and more clear and as you do so you will access more and more information this is a kind of challenge if you'd like for your development. Frame it as a game, if you would like. You are okay. playing a game. Use it's the words evolution. Use okay, the words Caitlin. I choose. I choose in the moment. Caitlin, you're becoming a new person all the time. So when you're becoming you're becoming this new person that are comfortable with yourself and the person you was before that did was not comfortable you are not that person anymore so you you're changing to a new person all the time I always know. i feel like i'm kind of stuck in the middle because it's like um i used to be so different and then now it's kind of difficult because what's holding me back is the people that judge me um, my family it makes me really upset because they are like when i it's kind of different for me um well, no, not really. There's some people that really care about other people's opinions, and then there's other people that care about the people who are really close to them that judge them. I, If somebody is really close to me and they judge me like that, that's what really hurts. If it's somebody I don't know, I don't really care. But um, if it's somebody that's really close to me and I have a really strong bond with, because I don't have many strong bonds in this life, um, it, it hurts because... You know, you share things with that person. You have a you you have memories with that person, and it, it just hits home because, you know, to judge you like that, it's just it's it's really hurtful. You know, but, so I, but, I need to let go of that. Just let it's, no. it's you you judging yourself. It's not them. You are allowing them to judge you, and they can't can't do anything else than judging you if you. That's what you believe, but if you see it. As a new person, you rea realize that they are not actually judging you. They are helping you. Helping you to understand yourself, to come back to self. It really is. They are a reflection of you, your environment, yeah. everything. You know? Yeah. Caitlin, have you, have you by any chance told any of your friends about um, your, your current interest in channeling and alien languages and, and everything that's really been going on? Uh, no, not really. Um, the only Start there. Let them know. Uh, show, show them your interest and help them to become interested. Because you might be surprised. There might be one or two that say, ah, I never thought of I I thought about that before, but I never had anyone to share that with, too. There might be a lot of around your area. You'd be I surprised. Have, Who's I have, open? I have done it, but um, the ones that I've told are not... They're not interested in that. Wow. Because May I place a question? Yes. Caitlin, yes. do you feel at the time it is correct for you to share with the people around you your current unfoldment of abilities? 
Do you feel this is correct for you? To my friends or my family? Yes. What do you feel? Is this correct for you at this time? My family, yes. My friends, no, because I don't really, I'm not really, I don't talk to them that much. I mean, outside of school. I, I kind of just, I don't really have any friends outside of school, to be honest. I do, but not, I don't really talk to many people, so it, it's difficult. I, I would share with my family. My family knows, but they, um, <laughs> they think I'm a nutcase. And I'm okay with that. I'm all right with that. Um, Very good. Excellent. But my friends, I just, I, to be honest, I don't really have many friends, and I just pretty much have one friend that I talk to, but not that much. And I know what she thinks about this already, because hmm. I've told her a couple things. When I started developing, I when I when I started awakening and I was aware of things, when I was aware of the Illuminati, I was obsessed with the Illuminati, and I, oh my gosh, I was such a negative person back then, and um, I just hated everything. I absolutely hated everything. I hated reptilians. I hated so many things, and I just, I was ruined. And um, I remember I was telling my friend about this stuff, and she was like, <laughs> "You're kind of insane." And I'm like, "Ah, well, I, I know, I know what I see, and I, I know what I, I read, and, and." She, I just know her opinion on that, and I know her opinion on other things too. So, um, I just know how she feels. But now I'm just a different person, and I, I still think if I did tell her about this stuff, she wouldn't understand. She's really, she seems like a but really materialistic person. Look, look how far you've come. Look where you were. As a reference point, we all have gone through most of this process, and you are you. You're continually to evolve. And you, you will. You, you are. You're growing so much. So never lose sight of that. You, you are. Look where you were, and look where you are. Yeah. Thank you. I've also had similar kind of um, instances uh, when I started to become more aware of the the eye people and the pyramids and the the reptilians yeah. and all of this kind of it it melts your brain a little bit and then you start to, you have to kind of see the darkness to be able to know where you're going next. And I found that most of my friends, they, they ended up ripping, ripping me hard for, for my beliefs. And at the end of it, I just, I just kind of shrugged it off. Um, we, had, we had a few falling outs regarding different belief systems, but I just took my time away. I, I went back. I judged myself, I felt what I needed to learn and then I returned to the group and it's, things have started to become a bit once you take your beliefs and their their beliefs into hand you kind of, you learn what not to say, what to say how you can yeah. put different things across to these people because some people, they're, they're just not I guess, they're, they're not ready yet I suppose okay. they yeah. they'll they'll come to they'll come to their belief system, or they have already. They'll come to it when when they feel ready. So the only the only way you can really make a difference in your own way is by focusing on your your um, your aspects that you can give to the humanity, and then other people will will join in when the time comes. Yeah, um, I know. I actually, I absolutely know what you mean because that is why I don't tell my friend that because I know her beliefs and um, I know what she would say. I just uh, like I don't even know. Me and her, uh, you're I think placing we're... you're placing the expectations on your on yourself and on her. Don't but don't put those limits on anyone. Allow them to say what they have to say because they're invoking within you the change mm -hmm. for the better. You see? Yeah. Yeah. There, there, there were just see them as reflections of yourself, and and put yourself in their shoes to feel what they feel. If that's what it takes for you to understand why they believe the way they believe, it's just a structure of belief, and how it can be changed and evolve. Because what you think now will become even greater or evolvement. Your evolvement, you're, you're constantly changing, shifting. You will 
you're experiencing all the time. So yes, you you are doing a wonderful job, Caitlin. Thank you. Um, and to Dan, also Dan. Much love to you. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Yes. Yeah. Um I I yeah, I know what you mean. I, I have been trying to understand people lately. Um even the ones who are extremely rude to me. And I've been trying to put myself in their shoes also. Um so even though it's really hard for me to understand them, I really I'm trying it's, to do that. Yes, it's the acceptance. Just to allow allow yeah. them to be who they choose and that they'll evolve on their own time. And then just remember though Always send love and gratitude because in through gratification, in what you call, rephrase, um, uh, what you call, um, I'm trying to use the word here, um, gratitude. In the space of gratitude, that's a place where you become, in what you say, it's a, it's a key to command, commanding your life. Giving gratitude, giving thanks is, will put you in a space of love. And through that, you are moving to to understand yourself, period. You see? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for that. Another thing to remember that helped me a lot is we all we all have our own struggles, so it's better not to not to try and take on other people's problems. Yes. Allow allow them to, to come to terms with it. Help in whatever way you feel that you, you can. But through try, your and, try, and, try and keep a detachment to their their energy, I guess would be the 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 main sort of um, the main uh, message. Yeah. Sorry, I've got a little bit a little bit tied up then. <laughs> it's okay. No, but also what I also think I need to do is just stop being so negative and put myself down because that's I think that's also where I need to start with too. It's the self appreciation. It always goes back to the self. But what we've been through society, through the religions of the world, we mostly the what we call the Christian religion, most of it has been taught that when you look at yourself it's there's a like a guilt, a shame. Always always give, give to others, always give, 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 but never really much about the self. But the self has to come first, because how can you help another if you if you can't help it, help yourself first? How can you truly love another if you're not willing to love yourself? You see? Mm -hmm. Aha, Katini, are you still there? Yes, and very proud of what is going on with this experimentation in format of communication within our group. Congratulations to all. It is most entertaining and encouraging to see different dynamics occurring within the group. Mm -hmm. Caitlin, do you wish to practice a little bit more your <coughs> capabilities? Uh, that is no. a no. That is a no. <laughs> it is okay. Thank you for being honest. I apologize. Um, it's not a case of apology, or apology is not required. I know. It I is just, only I... to be encouraged, being honest and truthful. Whenever you hear a sound like ah uh, or mm, it means <laughs> no. When you I hear a sound that. within yourself that goes aha, and my time notes, it is my first name, aha. <laughs> Whenever you have a aha sense, sense sound, or feeling inside yourself, it is your energy saying yes. Whenever you have a uh-uh or uh mm, mm, it means no. So being mindful of that, being aware of that, might be of use. You had a it's further comment. I interrupted you. I am I apologize. It's okay. It's okay. It's just today, um I don't feel like I'm gonna really speak it right until I really start I feel like I really I start speaking it really good when I practice a lot, when I'm really just getting into it, but today right mm -hmm. now at the moment is it's probably gonna sound really funny. And That's okay. It's whatever comes out in that moment. Remember, don't judge it. Don't put any attachments to it. Just allow it because eventually it'll make sense to you down the road. Enjoy the funny feeling that it gives you. Yes, it it starts, it's it supposed does. to bring laughter. It's it supposed does. to bring joy. I, I, yes. said, I, I don't know if I spoke Arcturian too because I went really high pitched with it one time and I was like, what am I saying? And I just started laughing because it sounded so funny. But look what it did to your vibration. Yeah. It raises it, you see. 
Yeah, it's awesome though. It actually, it's. Oh, I, I said it to the point. It sounded so good and so cool. And yes. I was like, God, I'm speaking Lyran. That's awesome. And that is... Arcturian, maybe. I don't know if that's Arcturian. I just, I, I think I mix the languages up. I'm not really sure. Feel the joy. Possible? Feel the joy that you get from it. Oh yeah. I feel, feel a lot of joy from it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, how mm-hmm. are you today? Yes. How are you today? Mm-hmm. I am very good, thank you for asking. I'm very happy and very joyful with what has been happening today among this group. It is a very high vibration of excitement, of joy, of self-exploration, of sharing, of encouragement. All of these are very positive things. All of these are things to be pursued and, let's say, repeated and reinforced if you choose to do so. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Um, were the Lyran ever a part of third density as, as we are at this present moment and then ascended or were they always in a higher density? Yes, we have been physicalized in the third dimension. That is true, yes. Okay, cool. Um, also, what what do Liren eat? Hmm. There are many options, and they have, as in your Earth experience, personal preferences as a part of choice, and also, let's say, species predispositions as part of that choice process also. Would it be would it be right to say that there are vegetarian lyra as well then? Yes, that idea is correct. There are Lyran vegetarians if you'd like to phrase it that way. Okay, wonderful. Yes, it is. What do you guys do every day? Um, like, what is it like hmm. in an average day of Lyran? That question is... contains a very high degree of variability in the possibilities of a response. However, <laughs> however, oh, it, it is... Oh. It is okay. If you would ask me my day yes. or a given entities day, it would be maybe more effective to answer your your day, your day. Curi- curiosity, to satisfy your curiosity. Yes. Would you like to know what my day or a day in my life looks like? Is that it? Yeah, what, like what you do, what do you enjoy? Very good. As I said in the earlier transmissions, my responsibilities have to do with looking over interplanetary communications with Earth. Mm -hmm. As you can imagine, there are many interactions with other entities that are cooperating towards that goal. As I have referenced, there's a team. When, When you're communicating with me, actually you are communicating with a group. Um, Jaguar, it's a... Yes. <laughs> what happened? One person muted Max because he had dog sound. Oh. Yes. I sense that Max wanted to warn that time limit has been passed. Yes. <laughs> Max, you are muted. <laughs> Uh, you have to measure how long is the, your um, uh, how how feel the, 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 how good does the jugger feel? It's it's up yes, to yes. I sense you are going to draw our attention towards that, and I thank you for honoring your commitment to that. Yes, I wish to reply to these questions or this specific question, and then finish. As I was saying, there's actually a team 
a group of entities that are cooperating towards this, let's call it, mission. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the notion of schedule, if you would like, that might be a useful idea to express. Exercise is also a part of my daily routine, if you would like, as eating with other beings in meetings, in working, um, what is the best idea, the best word? Mm, working meals are maybe a good idea to express. We many times are gather around ideas and issues, if you'd like, that we must address. And we are doing that both in more formal settings and as informal settings around shared meals. I have a also, question. Yeah. also yes. time for meditation and personal practices is a part of my daily routines. And as you can see, there are many common aspects between a day in the life of a Lyran, if you'd like, and a day in the life of a human being. Does that answer your question, Caitlin? Do you have more specific details you would like to know about, or is that satisfying for now? Um, I was pretty much, I was asking, like, what do you enjoy? Is that what, that's what you enjoy, right? You do, in, um, doing meditations and... Ah, ah, you, <laughs> I now understand. You are asking about also leisure, leisure uh, free time, <laughs> and enjoyment time. Yes, of course, my work, if you'd like, my responsibilities are a part of my excitement, my joy, things I like. That is why I am doing it. Mm -hmm. But I understand the idea you are wanting to explore. Yes, movement is a very important part. So exercise, as uh, is expressed in human terms, is a part of some things that excite me. Also, uh, studying. Studying history is something that is of great enjoyment to me. Oh my god, me too. History yes. Buddies. Yes. Awesome. That is an aspect that resonates between us. It's, it is true. I enjoy history very much. Nonetheless, I also enjoy prospective thinking, looking into the future, thinking, exploring ideas into how to best improve and become more effective and efficient at as an individual and as a person that has some responsibilities. So I also like to study in that domain to explore new ideas and to gather with other entities on that uh, topic. And sometimes exercising together. Sometimes we are moving together and discussing those ideas. So as you can see, I'm very fond of efficiency. I attempt to have a daily structure that combines both work and play. Not that they are separate. In my experience, they are one and the same. But for the purpose of human comprehension, free leisurely time and more work-focused time, I have a passion for efficiency. I like to combine many uh, ideas at once. When I'm exercising, I'm also exchanging ideas with other entities that are exercising together with me, and so forth. Does that answer your question? Yes. Is that you... detailed enough? Yes. Do you also dance? Do, you, do you dance? Yes. Yes. It is a part of movement I enjoy very much. Oh, Thank so it's kind of like Zumba. Kind of like Zumba. Kind of like yeah. Zumba. Yes, Zumba's not like... quite. I'm aware of the idea of Zumba. It is not quite the same, but yes, oh. in, the sense, <laughs> in the sense of the joy it brings up, in the sense of the joy of, of the body expressing itself, in the sense of the joy when it is shared movement between several beings, yes, in that sense, yes. Okay, that's awesome. That's, yes. that's really interesting. I always yes. wondered what you, what Lyrans do, because I did imagine, like, history and I don't know. I, I always imagine you guys so loyal and 
I, I don't even know. It's really interesting, though, just trying to imagine how a different species um, lives and works and stuff. But, yeah, thank you for sharing with us. That was really interesting. Yes, you are most welcome. And now I wish to honor the energy Maxim has put forth by bringing to my awareness that it is time for this conduit to rest. Even though it is very exciting, it does take some energy to do this, and I wish to honor uh, the energy Maxim has put forth. So, if there are no further questions or comments, yes, Gabriel. Goodbye, and see you in our dreams. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you will see me in your dreams, because you are wishing it to happen. Yes, Dan. Thank you for your presence. It is a very high honor to be in closer communication with you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Maxim. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank Bye. you, Franti, if, if I may. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence. You. Have a good yes. day or have a yes. good night. <laughs> yes. The same to you. The highest blessings and light and much love to you. Farewell and goodbye. Much love to you. Namaste. Namaste, dear one. Wow, I think I said the namaste wrong. Well, namaste. <laughs> I said I thought it was namaste. No, <laughs> nama, nama, stay, namaste. and then like stay, like <laughs> you're staying. Yeah, I. It took me a while to get used to that saying that. Nama, stay. Oh That's so cool. Congratulations, Caitlin, in your Thank in your you. translations and how it's gonna flow. It's just gonna come through you. Like you said, if you have to keep it private for a while, then do it. But just yeah. when you feel ready, you know. Yeah. Um, today is just it's it's different today, and I think I just need to go a little bit slower. <laughs> but I, yeah. it's interesting. I really wonder what I'm saying. I could be saying the weirdest things. <laughs> and like you said, wherever you're at in your room in your house, just have a pencil or a pad or pen, you know, like a a journal, yeah. and just scribble and write down things that just come to you from dreams, and it, it'll all come together. Yeah. Um. I find that my dreams have been blocked, and I think Nick told me is because from it was for my own safety. My body is doing that for my own safety, and I am a dreamer, so it's really difficult. But same here. <laughs> I, Big I love dreaming. Yes. I can I can relate to that. So, yes. is Jack, why are there still? I hope he's okay. I feel bad that he's. He, it takes yes, time. yes, I'm here, and it's okay. No need to worry. It takes just a little bit of energy, but it's okay. As long as we take care of our bodies, uh, move, which I'm doing right now. I'm sitting on a Swiss ball, not a static seat. So practical things, you know, having lots of water, going to the gym, walking on grass, mm -hmm. catching some sun. All of that is important. As long as we do that, we'll be fine. We can channel with no problems, as long as we are following our excitement, and that's what I'm doing, so that's okay. Okay. I just hope you feel better. Yeah. I probably it's might a... feel that way if I channel, too. I, I don't know. I want to channel elves, though. Elves. Yes, yes. That's something that um, I think in due time will happen. That's my intuition. Oh really? You know, it's yeah. Uh, I've ever since uh, I'm, I came in touch with your energy, I sense that you have that kind of connection. You know, very strong uh, connection to elemental energies and and natural beings or beings of of the natural world. So 
as oh, yeah. you unfold, that might happen. It's up to you. It's your choice. Again, it's all up to you. Yeah. Um, the tele. Oh my gosh. Telepath. The. Blah, blah, blah. Sorry, I'm not even speaking English there. Um, the telepathy. It just. I don't know. For some reason, it's not an intention for me to learn anymore. I mean, I experience it every day, but um, just ever since I started learning this language, it's like you're done telepathy. Just you can work on it if you want, but just. You're on this stage now. <laughs> yeah, that's really really interesting. Like in a couple of days, you totally shifted. You were like, um, I don't know if I want to channel. I want to work on my telepathy and stuff. And it's really entertaining to see the mind going, ah, I think this, I think that, and now all, all of a sudden the life life goes whack in the opposite direction. So it's so cool. You know? It's so funny. Like we have no idea. Our minds think one thing, and then life brings a totally different direction because that's what's wholly correct for us. That's what we are responding to, you know, like yeah. following our our excitement. Jaguar, you're so right on. It's it's we the when we're thinking so much, it's really and a lot of those thoughts are not ours. They exactly. we're taking on we're taking yeah, on yeah. so much of others, you know, flowing through us. It's really about the heart. It's coming. Like you said, when you felt to do something or prompted to do something, act on that because that's your joy. That's really what you're being gifted or guided to do. You see? Uh huh. That's 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 it. It has to do, and in my experience, I can only uh, share from my experience. It has to do with a response. You know, there's something a stimulus. Some stimuli are positive, and the response is positive. You go, wow, I really want to do that. Like you feel like. Enlivened and enlightened, and the body just expands and has energy for that. And other times it goes on and it contracts and it shies away. You know, it's it's in the body. We don't have to be so stuck in our heads. That's programming. That's conditioning. That's what has been put into us, as you were saying very well. And the mental field. We are always filtering the mental field. Most of the thoughts that come through our heads are not our own. That's really accurate, Brian. It's not our thoughts. They are just thoughts, like clouds going through the sky. It's thoughts going through our minds, and then we identify. That's the trap. When you think, this is me. This is my thought. What yes. am I going to do about it? Then the trap goes deeper and deeper. Because when you place those expectations on yourselves, that's not you. It's coming from others. Yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, that's so true. You know, when you it's when you identify, like you said, you have to observe. When you observe, you see ah, there's a thought. Ah, there's an emotion. But that's okay. That doesn't mean that I have to go. Hmm. That's my thought. That's my emotion. Now I have to do something about that. Now I'll make a decision and move towards something in my life. And that's veering us off our path. Our path is when we go, ah, this is for me. Aha, uh -huh. this feels right. Mm, cool. I like this. You know? Yes, take it. This, that, this is my experience. Yes, it's, it's uh, like you said, being the observer and take what you need. Anything else that really doesn't resonate with you in that moment, just leave it behind. And it might come back around to you when you're yeah, ready. Just, See? You just go, hey, this is in my awareness, but I don't have to identify with it. I don't have to do anything about it. It's just there. Okay. I look at it. It's okay. It's there. Then I, I bring it to my awareness, and I go, hmm, it's not there anymore. How interesting. Yes. No? So What's don't really... get so much in the mind. Just let it flow. Yeah, yeah. The getting stuck in the head is a real trap. And for me, of... <laughs> Especially, it's really, really, really easy to get stuck in the head, and it's not good. Not, uh-uh, not at all. <laughs> Especially being around internet and radio stations and stuff all day, we we're constantly being bombarded with these these signals that are put in random thoughts that have come from some TV show across the other side of the world, and we're like, what, what, where did this come from? We fail to realize that there's these signals being sent all day, every day. You don't you don't see them, but they're always there. You feel them, and it starts to when you start to realize that your mind is it's just like a little seat for other other things to come in and go. Here's an idea. 
you don't have to do anything about it, but try this, or you know, you'll get a feeling that comes up, and most of the time, the feelings are our own thoughts. So it's it's it's, it's nice to see that feelings come from us, and then thoughts come from elsewhere. Dan and Jaguars spot on because it's really getting to in tune with your body. It really does come to the self. Yes. I know this is really off topic, but have you guys ever smelt something and it's really nostalgic to you? Yeah, of course. The you know our one of our more power, powerful senses in terms of uh, storing information from the past is actually our sense of smell. So okay. smelling stuff from your childhood is very common. As you grow up, you come in touch with something, and then, bam, you're there in some past experience. It's normal. You know, you know what's funny? Every time I smell this one smell, I assume it's like leprechaun. <laughs> I just. Every time I smell this one, this smell, because it, it's really Irish smelling, and I just, I assume it's a leprechaun. I'm like, leprechaun is around here somewhere. <laughs> I keep oh getting God. a similar thing. You know, <laughs> there's a park just near where I live, and um, every time I walk through there, there's this little flower bed, and there's there's no sign of any kind of wild garlic, no garlic at all. But I always get a smell of garlic as I walk by there, and I just think to myself, I'm like, who are you? Like, there's, there's something there trying to go, I'm here. But it, It's a frequency. It really is. Everything's just frequency, and you're, you're yeah. picking up on that smell. The sensation. It randomly, yeah, it, it's in the randomest places ever, too. And that's why I assume it's just like, yep, there's a leprechaun here. There's a leprechaun around here. And I just, my friends are like, uh, what? <laughs> I don't just know. say hi to cool. it. Yeah, Next I time you get it, just, just welcome it. Yes. Oh, yeah, I do. I love Irish smells. I don't know why. I just it's awesome. I so, was in the in the basement at my job uh, this week, for and uh, one area of the basement like nobody has been there so for a long period of time for like ten years or something. So and there was no light in the room, so I only had the phone. So it was very like spooky place, a big basement with the uh, furnitures and things, stuff that are from like 10 years ago. And one of the room, I was felt so much energy. It came from my feet up into the head and out. I'm not sure if I <laughs> went to a vortex or not. <laughs> That's pretty weird. Yeah, some weird things happen in strange places. I mean... I'm, I'm not sure if it's it was a vortex or if there was a spirit there coming. I was connecting. But as long as I, when I step into the room, the door was completely... There was no door onto that room. But as soon as I was inside of the room, I felt any... As soon as I step outside, it's just gone. Yeah, it, it could be a spirit or it could be a vortex. I remember... Um, one time I was reading something and this guy, he, he channels Syrians or something like that and he said that he went into this really famous, uh, pyramid in Egypt or some, somewhere and they, the people said they couldn't take pictures inside this place because if they did, um, th there would be consequences and he said that the reason why you can't take pictures is because there's a vortex or there's a, a portal type thing and you would see it if you took pictures so it was really interesting and I was like wow that's, that's really cool but I hear there's vortexes everywhere I mean in different places um, different doors to different places um, Phoenix I think it's Sedona Sedona Arizona is one of the strongest ones yes really Oh. I've noticed that after after doing like an hour's worth of meditation you you get drawn back to the same position that you were sat in. There's, it's almost as if you open up some kind of little portal underneath you. It's really cool because you can feel it as you walk over the space that you were sat. You can just feel this kind of like, it's almost like a gust of wind and like the vibration feeling going up through your spine. It's so cool. Dan's right. You can feel that energy just pull. It's it's a 
kind of it's a grounding energy. Also, like experimenting with the trees, going up to the trees and hugging a tree, or like putting your back up against a tree and feeling this energy come up through. You know what I mean? Up through you. Yeah, that's actually something I do whenever I have a chance, and it's really powerful because yeah. you're inside the the tree's aura, and the trees hold a lot of energy and are very good to come out of our heads, out of our mind, minds, into our bodies, and it really helps us to ground and yes. to come, exactly. come in, into a, a clearer frequency. Than when I was when I was five years old, I, I discovered that one time. I was I I was I climbed a tree. We moved into a new home, and I climbed a tree, and I could feel something from the tree. And I put my back up against it, and it felt so warm. You know what I mean? It was interesting. Yeah, and the trees actually love love when we are there. They yes. love when we climb them, when we yes. sit in their branches, or when we sit at their bases and lean against them. They really enjoy that. They really do have this alive. That they're alive. They're part of the earth. The consciousness. They really do have consciousness. Yes. There's a little bee. Peek, peeking behind your your shoulder, Brian. Uh, uh, that's my son. Welcome. Hi. You wanna say hi. Hi, I'm Logan. Wait, you wanna say hi? Hey, Logan. Hi. Welcome. That's my little brother's name. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. How old are you? Eight. Oh, my brother's four. I wouldn't be able to hold him or anything. He's really, <laughs> really hyper. He's very intelligent for an age. Yeah. Yep. Thanks for being here. Thanks for coming and assisting the planet. Eight years long already holding the light. Keep the great job. <laughs> you too. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure, Logan. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Oh, this is a really interesting webinar. It really was. Thank you for channeling Ahakatini. Yes, I like thank that you. Guy. Yeah. It's awesome. Really awesome. It's great, and I really, I, I really enjoyed it, and I, he also really enjoyed it. The different dynamics that happened, and uh, I think it was also a very important message from a very practical standpoint for us to experiment with different formats. This is something Max is already uh, asking us to do or suggesting us to do to bring whatever we have to the table and experiment with different ways of organizing ourselves so we can uh, see where we, we can go as a group and different expressions and different components. Max talked about projects you would like to see coming forward, so this I think is already a step in that sense of experimenting different dynamics within the, within the, the meetings in this format. Maybe there are new formats, new technologies. I know, I'm not a specialist, a specialist in that, but I believe there are people that know about that, so having a space to experiment, I think, is very important. Yeah, I just, I just hope I can channel. I that if I can channel elves for you guys, I'm <laughs> so happy. Oh my gosh! You, you will, because <laughs> don't say if; it's just a matter of when. Yeah, it's when you feel you're ready. Yeah, I gotta believe. Just let go. Yeah, it, it's. Yeah, it's this 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 meeting today is just oh man. When we look back on it, it's it's a catalyst. It's a, it's a bringing people together to to be there for one another and people that just need to talk and open up and to uh, just to share them how we're feeling. You know. Yes. I, I want I wonder how you, Brian, going to be with another channel being as you are very hard following your excitement. This is my highest excitement right now, is being with all of you and being able to share that with people, you know? Yeah. I've, I've been so close when I tried shining. shining yes. so. Well, you're really close. That's what others are saying, right? You'll be there. I feel, I feel like I'm very close. You'll get there. Don't worry. Just... <laughs> Just like this just, said. just a little bit stupid thing. It could be a stupid idea or something. That's not really stupid, but 
Well, with you, Gabriel, do you feel like you can open up a little bit more, or do you have those around you that you feel that just don't understand you? You know what I mean? People around me. Yes. Do you, real, real people. So. Yeah, do many you, peop people doesn't understand. I having a hard time connect with others. I'm so. Yes. So it's just finding like, is there one person around you that physically that you can get together and practice this? Yes. Yes. I would say just work with that, with that person that you can trust and that you trust, you know, that don't will, won't go out and share your secrets or whatever you hold within yourself, but at least that can be there to work with you, to bring this out, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For, um, for me, it's not about privacy, uh, connecting with the being. It's more like accepting, uh, more like... Yeah. Allowing it, I wa you want it so bad, but you want it so bad, you're not allowing it to happen. You're getting in your way of your. Yes, I understand. Yes. I have a um, I have a similar problem with um, well, it's not really a problem. It's just a kind of a block, but it's um, it's the the willingness to accept the other entity inside. That's my main one because where where I have a, a very large connection with dragons and reptilians, the the energy that it it gives it's it's a little bit hard for me to contain as as I am at the moment, and that's that, I think that's one of the the biggest things that's going to happen when I do start to channel is that a lot of the entities are going to be bigger than myself, well bigger than my current self. You also maybe Dan is just. Just request in your in your meditations. Just request as much as you can. Just allow, but to request to have something to come through that's gentle. You know. Okay. Yes. Request something that's more um, of a nature that's so more gentle with you, like the fairy kingdom or wh whatever you want to play with. You know, it's yeah. totally up to you. But something that that brings you joy and that can like kind of like with Caitlin that comes out that makes you giggle. And it's just this because it's going to raise your vibration, and then you can connect with it, and then others can come around. It's where, where you feel, you know, where you where, it's just where go with with what you feel. Yeah, dragons are so powerful. It's just they yes. they're really serious. Yes, and yes. I don't mean serious as in the planet. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, then yeah. <laughs> I resonate with that, and I I can share something that that uh, if you wish to do, would you like me to share some? Yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah, um, and I, I think it's also something Ahakitini referred to, so it's recorded. You can reference that. Um, that has to do with being safe and feeling safe while channeling. When you are in the beginning stages, what's going to come through naturally? It's going to be just a higher frequency of who you are, you know? Uh, so you can feel secure and safe and let go of fear if you choose to do so that you will be in danger so to speak because what's going to come through it's already you you know it might be uh, a really powerful frequency because we are really powerful we just forgot when it, we came into this planet and uh, that might, might be a little bit disturbing but I think there's no reason to be scared per se. There's no reason for fear. Just just being uh, prepared for that and one of the most important things in my experience so far and again I'm just beginning but I have observed that in very practical terms is being prepared physically so again exercising, moving, eating right, as clean as you as you can, being well hydrating, drinking lo lots of water all of those little things together add up and will make uh, um, channeling easier and uh, less taxing on, on, on the body. So those would be my suggestions to be, be at peace because it's going to be something that you already know. It's going to be another aspect of yourself, taking care of your body and just trusting yourself and everything will un unfold in its own pace. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you all of you guys for, for a lot of help today. I, I felt like I got a mouth, mouth, another mouth inside of my 
had for a brief moment so <laughs> when I tried channeling. It was pretty weird. See, I should probably start meditating since um I just gained this language. That would probably help a lot, and maybe I could actually hear a voice or something. Use the language as a um as an intention for the meditation, so that you can learn yeah. to understand it a little bit. I guess mm -hmm. that might help with with it coming through clearer as well. The more you learn to understand it, the more uh, the clearer the the signal can be. Yeah. I'm just glad I gained this language. I mean, that's really awesome. I'm just so happy. But Lakesh said if I'm going to channel, since he said I'm really capable of it and I can see four dimensional energies and stuff, um, he said I got to let go of fear and um, I need to practice more with my lang this language or something like that. But I don't know how to let go of this fear because. I just don't want a random being popping out of nowhere and being, hey there, what's up? I would be terrified. I, that's the one. Reason. That's what's got me as well, the random being popping up. Yes, um, there, with... there has to be a reason, a good way, a small, like a, a, a normal way for them to walk in and be like, hello, this is me. But I just, I'm scared they're going to just pop out of nowhere and be like, hey, what's up? Like, that scares the... But see, those <laughs> thoughts... Those those thoughts are not really yours. Yeah. You're you're taking on everyone else's fear. Mm -hmm. Because in yourself, at, at your heart level, you already know that you'll be just fine. Yeah. Some yeah. aspect of you that there's a fear, a knowingness within you. There's a knowingness within all of us that that you know we have our guides, angelics, and what you call them, angels. Yeah. They're there. They're protectors. Yes. And then there was, just think of it from that perspective of uh, that you are always safe. It's it's what you believe. It's your beliefs. It's the belief system. You see? I believe in. To be honest, when I think about it, I don't really have a limitation of beliefs. I never really have. I think anything can exist. Anything can happen. But um, I don't focus on the negative anymore like I used to. I used to focus on so many negative things. I used to believe the reptilians would slaughter us and all this stuff, but now it's like I'm not focused on any of that. I don't care about that. I'm not I don't believe that anymore. See, but if from, it happens, yeah. it happens. See, for me is like my interest was like when I was younger I used to look up at the stars and say, Man, we can't be the only planet with life, you know? And it yeah. was just exciting to know that. I mean our scientists discovering life on other planets all the time, but you know, every day we never really talk about these things. But finding groups like this just to share is pretty cool, you know. It is because you get to talk to people who you can relate to, and that's why I invite people who are watching this to come in and say, "Hey, this is me, and this is my experience." I mean, because I would, I was nervous about coming in here, but I actually came here, and then everybody was so welcoming, and and that's why I keep coming here because it's it's really nice to experience this. So. Whoever's watching, just come in and say, hey, because I, I was you at one point, and yes. I know how you feel. And Put yourself in their position and, and feel what they feel and understand them, because through that, then you're really growing. Then you're really expanding to say, ah, I'm, I don't have to be, I don't have to really kind of judge them person or say, ah, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm the only one. My truth is my truth. You know what I mean? You, you're, you're not putting any attachments or expectations on that person. You're, you're allowing yourself to be you in the time that you need to be, you know, in the moment. Yeah, and there's, right now, there are four uh, people watching on YouTube, so I would like to reinforce that invitation yes. from Caitlin. If you are watching us right now, and if you feel it's correct for you, if you feel like, do you want to come and interact with us right now, you are most welcome if you choose to do so. If you don't, you are most welcome anywhere. Just do whatever uh, brings you joy. Yes, it, it's 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 remembering that uh, being always being in state as most is the the gratitude, gratitude and love for yourself. And then, like I said, it will start to flow. Things will just come to you as the synchronicities. You're probably seeing things like 11, 11, 11. You, you know what I mean? You see yeah. these numbers. <laughs> I see them. Yeah, I see them. I haven't seen them lately. Probably because I haven't really been paying attention. But um, I see yeah. them a lot. Um, but I, if 
I really love hearing people's experiences. So if somebody does come in, that's what really interests me. I for some reason I just love hearing people's stories. And so maybe that's what they that's what the viewers like doing. They like hearing our stories and introductions and stuff like that. So right. Yeah, that's that's that'd be really interesting to hear the viewers' stories and stuff. Right, as you were saying with the um the eleven eleven thing, um, has anyone else had any strange uh, numeric synchronicities or symbology come to them over the past few days? All the time. That's something <laughs> like master numbers twenty two, forty four, thirty three in the clock in the elevator, like with the two elevators. I had this experience. 77. Like one elevator was going up, the other one was coming down, and all of a sudden both of them stopped at the seventh, seventh floor, so 77. All of the time, you know, like license plates in cars, all over. As you start to accelerate your own process, and by that I mean just allowing it, just being aware of your fears, accepting them, noticing them, all of that shadow work. Yes. You will see it is possible that that comes in as a signal of synchronicity. Master numbers everywhere. I just had that for the last weeks before I started channeling, and it was more and more and more, and still today. All of the time I look at the clock, and I don't know, uh, like 1.33 or 1.13.31, you know, 1.331. All kinds of, of master numbers and combinations and funny stuff. It's actually, they say, people like Nick says, that's uh, actual communication and entities in and of themselves trying to bring your attention to them and so just saying hi. And whenever you have access to that, just go, thank you, like Ryan Express. Right. Tune into your heart, give thanks, express yourself and move on with your day with that awareness, that would be my suggestion. And what brings them in toward you, what brings those entities or energies closer is gratitude. It's how you treat yourself and others around you. Yes. Well, I'm going to leave for now and go do something. So have a good day, everybody. Thanks for the webinar. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Thank Dan. You. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, Jaguar. Oh, what is that, guys? How do I? Oh, yeah, Gabriel. Gabriel. Thank you, Gabriel. And what yeah. is this guy? Fran to say. We can call him Franti. Yeah, Franti. Is that okay? Franti. There we go. Anyway, have a good day, everybody. Thanks for um, helping me out and giving me advice. I really, I'm gonna look into that, and I'm gonna. We we we're not trying to enforce something on you. It's your shows. You can choose whatever you want to do. I think it's for the best. I need to start. I just need to start leaving myself. I need to stop putting myself down like I am, and I need to. I'm not gonna tell my friends because I already told them already, and I know what they said. So yeah. Yeah. I know what they what, believe. What, I respect their beliefs. And when you're speaking now, you are in. When you're speaking, you are doubting yourself. So change how you speak about yourself. Mm -hmm. Bashar also, um, there was a, something about quitting smoking. That um, It has a very, very similar uh, concept for all aspects, really. Is um, There's a timeline that we are doing everything that we, we wish. So all you need to do is tune into that timeline, and it will be there. You just need to know that it's, it's existing now. That was, mm -hmm. that was what I got from Bashar, one of Bashar's um, channelings. And it... It helped. It was it just straight to me. Just got me. It was wonderful. Yes, but I'm just so used to that environment where I just I've always put myself down. I guess that's just been something that's been normal with me, and that's why it's so hard to like just. Change. You're not the only one. I've I think most of us have gone through down. that. I always thought time. it was normal. I always thought it was normal. I thought it was. And people didn't mind. They were like, oh, okay, yeah, whatever. It, I always did it. And, um, so that's, that's why it's it's like um, it's, it's something so normal to me. And then it, for you guys to tell me that that it's not a good thing, it's like, oh, oh it isn't. Okay. And so I'm going to change that now And it, because it is a good thing to not put myself down. It is 
a negative thing to do that. But, um, so yeah, I, I think I do need to change and I need to stop doing that to myself because it, it's not good. I am not, I'm not just a stupid person who believes in this stuff. I, I'm somebody who experiences this stuff every day and it's a gift, you know? It's, when, it's when you're thing. saying that, I can feel what you're thinking. It's the attachments again. You're, it's the expectations yeah. of others. You can feel that in you, don't you? Mm -hmm. What yes. others think. And that's hard to <laughs> break, the true. shame, the guilt. Where does that come from? It, it's just the way we're raised, you know? Yeah. yeah. From, my, from my experience, we've, like, the, um, the people that tend to cause the massive protection over themselves, they're the ones that have the most to hide. And when we learn that we put up this shield to kind of get us to where we need to be. You learn to, I guess, accept all of your faults and accept all of your your gifts. And then you can turn your faults into gifts and your gifts can be projected into whatever you wish to do. It's just about kind of learning that we've, we've made our choices to help us in our mission and that they're not bad choices. There's never really a bad choice. There's just different paths we can take and they, they all lead to the same place just take longer Dan you just you're spot on it's the choices there's really it really isn't it's not right or wrong it's we're we're judging it we're saying it has to be right or has to be wrong we're the ones making the judgments up we're judging ourselves yes yeah it's, we need to well it, it's a benefit to stop judging ourselves <laughs> so it's not so much a need it's just a it can help. Yes. So right. that's why I just need to stop doing that because I'm so used to it, and I, I don't even think when I do it. That's the thing. That's that. It's so natural to me. It's like I don't even need to think to say it. So mm -hmm. I don't even know when I say it sometimes, and it's like, oh god, now I look at this video over, and it's it's like I probably put myself just down. Just catch like, yourself. Yeah. Just catch yourself. Observe your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings. What drives you each day? You know, observe that which makes you happy, that which makes you sad, and just observe it, and just go with what you, your highest joy, and just, because you're going to reflect, you're going to raise other people, they're going to see a spark within you, some, a difference, a change, and they're going to, you're going to actually be a mag, kind of magnetic, your personality, because you're in your excitement, you're in your joy, and you're bringing your truth out, which is just, you know, for your, your truth, what you believe, and so you're going to be a catalyst for many of us are, is to, you're going to be like a magnet. Yes? Yes. Anyway. Oh, God, I was here longer. Okay. <laughs> I'm actually going to go now. Thank you, everybody, for everything. You, I'm so you happy. Much Bye, love to you. Caitlin. Have a, good Have a great day. Okay. Okay. Goodbye. Bye, Gabriel. Goodbye, Bye, I think you all. Bye, Dan. Bye, Jasmina. Jas Jasmine. Bye, yeah. Max. Okay. Yeah, I, Have a good I'm day. Like I'd like to take the opportunity to say hello to Yasmina. Welcome. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, perfectly. Welcome. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. And you, how's, how's your day going along today? Yeah, it's great. It's sunny. Yeah, outside, and uh, I just came from a bike, so it's great. <laughs> Excellent, you were so, moving. Yes, <laughs> so great. I didn't have the time to tune in. It's okay, it's perfect. You you went and did something that you felt like doing, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Excellent. You're speaking a long time? Yeah, I've been here like a couple of hours now, I think. How did did you come oh, across? Did you see us on YouTube or you just felt like tuning into the Hangout straight? Yeah, I think the information is great. Um, I seen it on YouTube. I was the first one uh, channeling, then Nick, and I think the information is amazing. <laughs> Yeah, I I, rem also, I remember you. I sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. You can say. 
Yeah, yeah, I think you've been also already in one of the webinars. Is that true? Like raising questions, I think. Yes. Uh, I ask uh, two questions, I think. One uh, is about my dreams. You know, the corner in the sky, maybe you remember. Uh huh, yeah. Yeah, do you remember? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm, I'm. Well, remembering. that was like, oh, freaky to me, you know, <laughs> when I heard the explanation. Uh huh. And how do you feel now about that uh, information? Do you pr have you pro had time to process it? How do you feel now? Uh, just a second. Yes, um, how do I feel? <laughs> I don't know, I have more questions than the answers, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty yeah. common, I think. It's, but yeah, but it's about, great. About, uh, feeling, not so much new questions, but did that information bring you um, peace or some kind of, of feeling? Did that help yeah. you in some way? Yes, um, he said, I think it was Takur, I think it was Takur, uh, he said, um, like I teleported to the place where I originally came from in my dreams, so that was like, whoa, because I can dis distinctly remember what that place were, it was like a, it was like a game, um, it was like a some sort of a game. It was weird, really weird. <laughs> and he said I teleported to the place. So, okay, that was that looks like. <laughs> cool. That's great. So it sounds like it it really was helpful and bring bring some kind of benefit to you. Yeah, I'm happy for you. Yeah, of course. Uh, and I also have many more questions. Yeah, weren't some of your questions also related to some kind of back ache and a throat ache? Yeah. <laughs> you remember. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, in the, her answer had to do with the, some... Um, um, past life regression. Yeah, memories that can get passed on from generation to generation. That's a really interesting aspect of, of, of genomics and and uh, I'm yeah. fascinated from, from that kind of stuff. And then actually seeing it in real life, people coming and saying, hey, I have this yeah. pain and I think it has to do with past lives or it's a family thing and then actually being confirmed. It's really interesting. And how do you feel? That's has that pain uh, lessened a bit? Is it is it uh, easier? Um, lately, it's not really a, well. I feel it, but it's not really a pain. You know, I I feel the back pain, but it comes and goes. Um, so I think I'm gonna schedule a, a webinar with Nick. Uh, we're gonna do a past life regression by Skype, so I maybe I I will see how this will help, and uh, I'm very excited. I will report if uh, anyone wants to hear. Great! It it would be cool if you would feel like to share. I want to take the time to say hello to Ellie. Hello, Ellie. Welcome. Hey, hello guys. Really happy hello. to see you are doing something again. Much love and I will, if I can, I will be um, active, but uh, much love and um, have a great webinar. Yeah, thanks, Ali. Um, Gabriel, yeah, go ahead. I will have to go make some dinner for me. So yes. see you guys next time. And also, uh, when the last person leaves, says that 
the li there will be no further com communication because it's being recorded as long as human colonies is online it's going to be recorded I I have to get off here too guys I want to say much love to all of you thank you so much Jaguar and all of you farewell Brian farewell Gabriel yeah have you're welcome day. Have a great one. Uh, uh, Jaguar, I wanted, to, I wanted to ask you, how are you doing with your healthy diet and the sport? Yeah, um, to be honest, I've been uh, falling off a bit, um, but I'm getting back on as soon as possible. I just had a couple of experiences that were a bit challenging. Um, the other day, as, as Max um, became aware. Uh, I channeled pretty late into the night. It wasn't healthy, so I learned something from that. But yeah, other other than that, I've been doing great. I've been feeling great, and I really think not that I really think I really have the experience, the actual sense that uh, it was really helpful in beginning to channel. Uh, shifting my diet and including juicing, you know, vegetable juice, juice, you know, have you heard of juicing? I have, yes. Yeah, Ellie, are you there? Yeah, it's okay. So I was responding to that. So yeah, I started, that's one of the things I started juicing. Yeah, and uh, I got into the gym and I started exercising every day, so all of that definitely uh, played a part in uh, accelerating uh, all of these abilities. So, uh, back to you, Yasmin, if you wanted to finish, I got the sense you didn't fully express yourself. No, no, it's just, it's okay. I, I don't really. I enjoyed the that you spoke spoke about um, the ability for the challenge channeling when you want to make uh, your life healthier uh, you have a better ability to channel you said yeah that's something Aha Kitini was very and still is very adamant and firm about because all of this um, spiritual talk if you'd like is very nice and entertaining and fun but if we don't yeah. bring it into our actual lives, it's um, not so effective, you know. So it's a really important message of him, uh, one of his very important messages, and uh, it's something I've been actually practicing in my life and doing my best, and I've been seeing the results from it very, very clearly, you know. it's It has to do with how you feel. If you wake up energized, if you have the the mental clarity, the emotional stability, it all is very linked to how we eat, if we, we are hydrated, if we are exercising, all of that. In my experience, is a very, very clear link, yeah, for sure. That's amazing. Who said that? Did someone channel that to you? Yeah, Aha Kitini is very, very firm on, on the importance of that. And also Takur was also before Aha Tikini uh, talking about that. And yes, Eli, I just saw talking about superfoods. Yes, superfoods are something I incorporate into my vegetable juice, uh, specifically spirulina, which is a, veg um, uh, a protein source from uh, algae, actually and uh, other superfoods like maca and chia seeds, a whole bunch. So yeah, Ali, I do uh, take into my body uh, superfoods, yeah. Do you do green smoothies too? Yeah, I don't do smoothies per se because they are suboptimal. Smoothies are actually blended and whenever yeah. you use a blender in high speed, you're actually exposing the, the juice to uh, oxidizing it quicker. I use a slow a masticating juicer, okay? So it's a different kind of, of process for higher quality juice. So I use a, a slow 
masticating juicer, not a blender or not a high centrifugal juicer. Those are cheaper if, if that's what you can get, go for it, I would say. But if you can afford it, it's a substantial investment. But hey, I'd rather pay now uh, and have the greater lifestyle I can than pay later and have a really fancy um, funeral, funeral, you know? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's amazing. I never heard about that slow juicer. That's yeah. amazing. Thank you for the explanation. Yeah, you're welcome. It's uh, also pretty new to me. I just came across the information, was uh, getting the money for it and studying it a little bit. But then I just, after having support from Takur, uh, I just went for it, you know. I just felt it was right for me. It was something I wanted to do. And I went for it, and uh, yeah, now I've been experimenting with it, and it's been great. When I juice, when I have juice, uh, my body frequency shifts totally, and I'm the channeling is much more clear. Uh, I'm emotionally more stable, mentally more clear. It, it, it's so powerful, you know. It has to do with um, chlorophyll, you know, uh, green leafy vegetables. That's yes, really important. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, the, I, I think that's important too. Uh, the, um, can I ask you if any you are I don't know, a vegetarian or uh -oh. you don't have to answer. Uh, at the I'm time, sorry. I'm not vegetarian, um, and that's something I I respect. I've experimented with that, and I came to the awareness that at this time, my body uh, doesn't seem to respond well to. Uh, a vegetarian diet and that's something of of uh, some controversy and uh, what I've come to understand at this time is that each individual is an individual is different so we must yeah. understand what works for us for ourselves and not get trapped into groupthink you know groupthink the, the word groupthink yes I know you know, when a group has this kind of mentality and then you have to conform and to subject yourself to that, you have to suppress your individuality to start thinking and behaving like others. So I, that's not for me. If that's something that makes someone happy, go for it. But for me, I'm an individual. I need to experiment and understand what works for me. I'm not hoping or expecting someone else to live or to eat like me. I want to find what is correct for me and I hope others do the same for themselves. If they feel like vegetarian or raw vegan or carnivore is the right thing for them, a whole power for them. I support them 100%. Be yourself, experiment, find what works for you and uh, let what everyone else thinks as a point of reference, listen to them. but. Mostly, I would say, experiment and see what works. Actually, I'm a fan of effectiveness, not of just hearsay and speculation. Yes. People don't know how easy it is to have a juice maker and just to, to squeeze in an apple and two carrots and the cucumber, for example. When this happens for like 30 seconds, you wash it for like a minute and everything is done and you have an amazing juice which gives you a lot to start up the day. Does the, um, yes. does the slow juicer have a, a bit where it collects all of the, the extra parts of the veg as well? Come again then? What um, was... For your, your slow juicer that you were saying about, does it collect the the uh, leftover parts of the, the fruit and veg that you put in it. Yeah, it actually splits, uh, the juice drops into a juice bowl and then the, the pulp uh, is pushed uh, to, a uh, to a pulp collection tank. So there's two tanks, two separate tanks, one for the juice, another one for the pulp. Did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, that was, that was spot on. Thank you very much. 
Do you want me to give you an actual example with a hyperlink and a video of oh, that kind of juicer? Or, or even just the name of, of the juicer would be yeah. would be great. I can do a little I bit of research around it then. Yeah, I don't want to get into the commercial aspect, so I'll share in the chat bar. Do you see the chat bar there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll post the links there so you can check them out. And it's just examples. I'm not advocating or selling or uh, defending any kind of interest. I have that disclaimer. I have no, nothing to gain other than to share something that works for me. Okay? That's great. So if anybody want, wants to discuss, go ahead. I'll be checking this and posting this in, in the meantime. So did someone did any channelings today here? Jaguar did. There was um it was quite a good session with Aha Kitini. So um, if you if you look at it on online on you should be able to yeah. there's probably a lot of a lot of information that you, you may be able to kind of ascertain for yourself through it. Because it, it was quite a um a well rounded conversation today. Wow, amazing. I'll be surely I'll surely look at that. Okay, I think I will go. Have a nice time. You too. Welcome again. Has anyone had contacts with, um, or visits to the colonies lately? Hey, Darren. Sorry, I'm I'm a bit like doing two things at the same time, so here and there. But my internet connection got better. From I hear you clearly, so. Um, about the colonies, I I cannot say much. As I guess I go there, but I really don't remember a lot. Yeah, that seems to be the the biggest thing, is that more people have started to they're getting ideas that they're going, but there's no kind of memory of anything that's happening. It'd be quite interesting when when we start to be allowed to remember things. Yeah, well, I guess what they do is they, they they kind of use our knowledge in order to build up some strategy towards communication with us. Yeah, it must be it must be quite difficult trying to um, get through to the humanity, I guess. Especially seeing as we've we've created all of these blocks between us and other other aspects of ourself, so it's trying to um, find the way back in to uh, get our attention, I guess. Yeah, and then here you have the links. 
It's in the chat bar if you want to copy that and uh, paste it in a document so you can access it later because when we shut down the Hangout, uh, that information will be lost, okay? Thank you very much for that. Yeah, you're most welcome. Those are just a couple of examples. Um, I'm not advocating nothing in particular. I would suggest you, you do your own research and check what kind of juice you prefer. If you want to get into juicing, I just can make a couple of, share a couple of uh, high uh, notions I got. One is that being clear of what kind of juice you want is the main thing. If you want to juice just vegetables or mainly vegetables, if you want to juice just, uh, ve uh, just fruits or mainly fruits, or if you want a mix of both, like 50-50 or more vegetables or more on the fruit side. My understanding is that the best thing is actually actually vegetables. Uh, one saying is, eat your fruit, drink your veggies. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, I've, I've noticed a, um, I kind of, I enjoy uh, kale a lot more as a smoothie than than as a an edible, I guess. Yeah, so, kale, kale is really powerful. It. Yeah, for sure. It's really powerful. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Oh, no, it's okay. You, you pretty much summed up what I was going to end with anyway. <laughs> it's another one of those synchronicities. Yeah, that's interesting. That's cool. So, uh, green uh, kale would be on the, can on the ca uh, category of green leafy vegetables. And from my understanding and my experience, that's one of the key components you want in a green juice. So, again, to discern juices, from smoothies. Smoothies are high speed made and that's suboptimal. That's better than nothing, okay, for sure. A green smoothie or a pop soda or some kind of, uh, you know, fizzy drink, hands yeah. down, hands down the, the high speed uh, juice or smoothie. But if you can afford that and if you really uh, want to go down that path, and uh, I would um, say that it is time com consuming. It is a big investment, both in terms of uh, money and time. But if you are willing to do that shift in your life, and you, if you are committed to, to experimenting with that, uh, yeah, uh, having high quality juice um, uh, is worth the time. In my experience, it's, it's worth the time, it's worth the money. Um, and then from there you quickly get up the chain into the actual produce you're using. Are you getting as fresh as possible? Are you able to have your own garden? That's a kind of questions that are of relevance for me right now. I'm not able to have a garden, but that's something I want in my life. You know, to actually live somewhere I can grow my own greens have my own garden, grow them organically and just go pick something from the garden and put it into the juicer and have the highest uh, nutrition density and quality possible. But in the meantime, I do it, I'm do i doing what I can with what I have and that's just common everyday supermarket um, groceries. And that's fine, that's where I am right now, I accept that and I'll keep moving forward one step at a time. Um, do you have some more questions? Oh, oh, I want to tell you about the nuts. The nuts, uh, the raw nuts, you can put them in water for like um, a night, overnight, and after that um, you can uh, mix them, uh, mix them not, but um, uh, what was the name, make them like um, Oh, forgot the word. Sorry. Yeah, I understand. You can make like almond milk. And yes, the milk. Like mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and this is also very nice. And the other thing is that you can put seeds, mm -hmm. seeds into water and wait them again overnight to start uh, growing, and uh, consume them after that. They have yeah. uh, like ten times more power. Yeah, sprouts. Sprouting is also a thing. I already have the seeds. I'm collecting the materials to start sprouting. That's Thank you for that, Ellie. It's really powerful. It's a really powerful food because 
it's um, full of, of life force, you know, it's just coming out of its shell and beginning its journey, so to speak, in life. <laughs> so, yes, sprouting is definitely something I'm into, and wheatgrass, uh, in that chapter of, of sprouting, you can sprout wheatgrass, chickpeas, a Every, whole bunch of seeds, yeah. A, a lot of things, and it's 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 uh, very very powerful. Yes, I love it. <laughs> uh, great, Dan. So that would be something I would also share: uh, wheat grass and sprouting for sure. If you're yeah. into that, I have started to um, become a little bit more interested in the nutrition that goes into my body. So the, these are all wonderful. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to share and to be of service. You know. Um, I think that's that's it. Um, yeah. Ah, I'll, I've shared one video uh, that is top t top three for raw foods, and he'll get into detail in in the into that um, discussion. I think of of uh, if you want a more fruit based. But my understanding is that vegetables in a juice format may be a good example to get from the abstract to the practical. My personal choice of juice has um, green leafy vegetables, cucumber, so green leafy can be kale, collard greens, a whole different kinds of, of, of green leafy vegetables. Uh, I use as a liquid base or, or uh, water rich vegetables, I use the celery and uh, a cucumber. Then I use an apple, a bit of um, uh, ginger, and lemon. Also, one lemon, one apple, some ginger, and I then love ginger. yeah, and then the the liquid uh, rich vegetable, so celery and cucumber, and then the uh, um, the green leafy vegetables, and then I supplement that with some spirulina, sometimes some chlorella, to give it an extra nutrition uh, uh, profile. So that's so one the, the chia seeds are very interesting. Uh huh. Uh huh. I, I also. I don't know if they're called chia in uh, English. Yeah. Or kia. Yeah. Kia, maybe kia, but they're very nice when you put them in water for like. 15 minutes or so and they have a jelly and this is very good for uh, doing sports like before hour before the sport you drink um, a cup of, chi of Kia cocktail and this gives you a lot of power and straight strength for the practice yeah for sure I also use uh, those seeds for sure those and others like uh, sesame seeds there's a whole bunch of different kinds of seeds, and they are very nutrient uh, dense. Lots of vitamins, lots of minerals, some good fatty acids, for sure. So great suggestion there, Ali. Yes, yes. Uh, I love uh, in the morning tahini with honey. It's very good when you're not hungry with uh, the fresh juice, just to to put your stomach in in order, because you have to balance. Uh, all the people have to know that eating only fruit can make your stomach um, can make you pains and um, and you don't feel you don't feel good Ex especially when you start doing this just now and you haven't done it before people have to balance like between the the nuts and the fruits and everything should be in a very good um, quantity together it's all about balance you can't. You can. Uh, it's it's not advisable to have too much of anything. Yeah, for sure. My my suggestion would be starting experiment for yourself. You know, read up, listen to other people, but always trust your body. Always come back to experimenting and observing the effects on yourself. Okay, your experience first, then everybody else's opinions and thoughts and all of that. But from my experience, a suggestion would be just simply adding some good stuff so to speak in so keep your normal diet add juicing you know juice in the morning juice in the evening and take it from there just start adding stuff a little bit of uh, superfoods here and there 
um, just start taking out some sugar, some processed foods, and you'll see as you start to juice, your cravings of sugar will drop. You know, as you get more nutrient dense food into your body, you'll see uh, addictive patterns in eating start to fade away. The, sometimes they come back when you're stressed, when you're emotional. That's normal. That's to be expected. But yeah. as you move forward, things shift by themselves. Yeah, that was my point. From time to time, you start craving a bit from the old stuff, and it's not bad just to to get some, just to relax your mind. But it it changes a lot when you when you change your diet. Sweets are the sweets are the biggest one. They they get you hooked from such a young age that they become almost kind of a, a second nature to you. That you just you walk into a shop and you're directed to the chocolate or the the fizzy sweets or the cans of drink, and then you you kind of it's getting getting out of that and going straight to the fruit and veg section instead of going to the chocolate aisle. That's the that was my biggest one. Yeah, that's a great example. And also, I, I'm, I'd like to say that we can't, uh, or that we may choose to also not get obsessed with this because it's really easy to shift from one extreme to the other and go and, so to speak, beat ourselves up. Oh, now I feel like having a chocolate. I can't do this. I'm a bad person, you know, and getting into all of the, those neg negative patterns on the other side. So also honoring yourself and feeling like asking yourself, do I really want to have something sweet right now? And if you go, aha, uh -huh, yeah, I feel like it, go for it. It doesn't have to have shame and guilt, you know. Um, but yeah. this is something that just comes up once in a while uh, when you start to getting into this. And also, um, everybody's different, again. There's no one solution for everyone. Uh, some people crave uh, starchy foods. Some people crave salty foods. Some people, li like you, I see Dan and myself, crave sweet foods. This has to do with individuality and different kinds of bodies that we all have. We are all different. And that's really important to keep in mind, in my point of view. Uh, I'm just coming in to say goodbye for now and thank you all. It was wonderful. Goodbye, Frantisek. Have a nice day. Yeah, Franti, thank you for that. And uh, I'll take also that opportunity and say that it was a pleasure and uh, I hope to see you again. And if you feel like um, participating, that's okay. If you don't feel like it, it's okay. Feel free to express yourself as you wish, okay? So I have to go also, and it's been a pleasure to be here with you today. Thanks, Ellie, for showing up. Right? And then, yes, for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Bye -bye. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you, and speak soon. And Bye everyone, well. stay in the light, guys. Bye. Goodbye.